it's time for the Erickson countdown to kick off. And up next, the Buccaneers look to rebound from three straight losses as they face a team still looking for its first win of the season, the Indianapolis Colts. Kevin Harlan and Jerry Glanville are ready to bring you all the action, so let's send you on out to the RCA Dome. There are many kinds of pressure in the NFL, but if you're the Indianapolis Colts, the pressure to win the first game of the season for your team and your fans is excruciating. For Tampa Bay's Warwick Dunn, the pressure of being a rookie is fast becoming a humbling experience as he and his Buck teammates desperately seek a win today in Indianapolis to keep pace in the pressure-filled playoff hunt. We are inside the Dome in Indianapolis. Cold and raw outside, warm and cozy inside. And we're halfway through the regular season. As today, Fox Television Sports presents the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the winless Indianapolis Colts. Hi again, everyone. I'm Kevin Harlan. Well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers began the season on a rampage at 5-0, but they've lost three consecutive games since that start. Moments ago, I caught up with the coach, Tony Dungy, on the sideline. There was a lot of attention on us uh, after maybe week four, and we won in week five, going to Green Bay in week six undefeated. Uh, something that some of us, myself included, hadn't had to deal with too much. But I'm glad it happened to us early in the year, so hopefully we can get things righted. And then later in the year, when we are in the playoff chase, uh, it won't be new to us. I'm with Jerry Glanville. And Jerry, what's the difference between that undefeated Tampa Bay team and the team now, which has lost three in a row? Well, Kevin, on defense, absolutely nothing. They're still playing excellent defense flying around, putting pressure on the quarterback, gang tackling on the run. But a big difference in offense, they have pulled the reins in. They don't allow Trent Dilfer, their quarterback, to try to win the game until there's four to eight minutes left in the game. All they do is chug the ball for three quarters. I think to be, be successful, they got to turn him loose the entire game. A couple years ago, the Colts were fighting for a spot in the Super Bowl. They lost in the AFC Championship game. Jerry, a year ago, they were 4-0. and oh. What is... What has happened to Indianapolis? A lot of close losses. In fact, five games that they probably had a real chance to win and didn't get a chance to win any of them. This has really hurt them emotionally. And sitting down talking with the players, you can tell they're emotionally hurt, and they wonder if they are going to win a football game. Then you tack on the emotional leader of this football team is Jim Harbaugh, and he's not going to be able to play for two to four weeks. I think this team has to really find a way to get back up and play good football. Yeah, Harbaugh is out because of the scuffle with Jim Kelly, but he was in the Dome before for the game today. It's the Buccaneers and the Colts coming up next from Indianapolis. And now, the Erickson countdown continues. We're back at the Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana with Jerry Glanville. This is Kevin Harlan. The Buccaneers have won the opening flip, and that means that Tony Dungy in his second year as the head coach, will get his offense on the field against former Packer head coach Lindy Infani. He was out of football once he was fired from Green Bay. Came here as the offensive coordinator under Ted Marchabrota and brought in a lot of players as he was named the head coach. Chris Gardaki will be kicking off for the Indianapolis Colts. And deep back, Reed Al Anthony, a good-looking rookie out of the University of Florida. The Colts, the Bucks, and here we go from the Dome in Indy. Anthony from the goal line for Tampa Bay. And he's out to the 19-yard line. Tackle made by Chris Hetherington, a reserve running back. Trent Dilfer is in the midst of his best season as a pro. 12 touchdowns, a career high. Eighth-rated quarterback in the NFL. Good-looking offensive line. Gruber Pine is the most consistent. Mayberry, Diaz, and a good-looking second-year player in Jason Odom. In the backfield, rookie Warwick done with Mike Allstott. Anthony along with Copeland. Anthony, the rookie, who just returned the kickoff. And the tight end is Dave Moore taking the place of the injured starting tight end, Jackie Harris. From the 19-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. And Warwick Dunn takes it over the left side and out to the 22-yard line and picks up three yards, setting up second down and seven. The Colts defense comes into today 18th in the NFL. Fontenot, McCoy, Ellis Johnson, a former number one. Dan Footman today takes the place of the injured Tony Bennett. In the linebacking core, Morrison, Alexander, and Quinton Coriop. And in the secondary, a couple of hard-hitting safeties, Belzer and Blackman. The corners gray along with Diedrich Mathis. 
in a three on first down. Second down, seven yards to go with Dunn and Allstott in the backfield. Horace Copeland goes in motion. Dilfer's first pass is caught by the tight end Dave Moore. He is near the 27-yard line, just his seventh reception of the year. He picks up six yards. He'll be a couple yards shy of a first down. Real tight coverage by the Colts. Not much room. Excellent throw. So it'll be third down and a long one. Carl Williams is coming as a wide receiver. So three receivers deployed for quarterback Trent Dilfer. Short drop back by Dilfer. First down pass caught by Reedell Anthony as he gets away and takes it up to the 37-yard line. Tackle made by linebacker Elijah Alexander, and Anthony is the team's lone big play wide receiver to date. He picks up nine on that third and one. Good job for protection. The Colts are going to send the blitz off the weak side, the open inside. Excellent pickup. And in third down, Dilfer is the number one quarterback in the NFC. He continues that. All start by himself in the backfield. Opening drive of the game. First down and 10 yards to go for the Buccaneers near the 35. And here is Mike Allstott, the best fullback the first half of the season in the NFL. And he picks up about a yard before being stuck by Elijah Alexander. Second and nine. And I think they have to get Allstott going. What's happened to the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they become a run-oriented first and ten with Mike Allstott. And I think the defenses are just playing for a run on first down. And he's finding it very hard to find any open holes. He's got a lot of people here who are filling a lot of holes because he played at nearby Purdue and he's from Chicago. He said the uh, the big day though is going to be when he has to go to Chicago and play against the Bears. That'll take his whole paycheck to buy all those tickets. Second down and nine. Dilfer with traffic and down he goes. Dilfer is shot back at the 26 yard line brought down by Dan Footman taking the place of the injured Tony Bennett. And Footman comes up with his fourth sack of the year and a loss of eight on the play. Well, a good job by Dilfer because the ball was supposed to go to Rydell Anthony and they had called a corner rotation talking about the Colts where they would have intercepted the ball. Dilfer saw that. I would say two years ago he'd have thrown that football and there would have been an interception. And even though he got sacked, Kevin, that was an excellent job by the quarterback. You like Dilfer now. I, well, he has grown so much and that play right there tells you he he knows what's going on and he read that he was in trouble. It's third and 17 with the ball just outside the Tampa Bay 27 yard line in a scoreless first quarter. Flag is thrown Dilfer on the run and he throws low and an uncatchable pass to wide receiver Horace Copeland. But there is a flag on the play. He walked over talking about the fish that threw the flag walked over to Dilfer and talk to him after he threw the flag. Mike Carey is our referee today and the preliminary call is against the Buccaneers. So marching back five yards. What was third and 17 now becomes third and 22 back at the 23 of the Buccaneers. Well, there was no option to the Colts whether they decline the penalty or take it. So it had to be they ran out of time on the clock. Tight end goes in the backfield. Hand up. Well done. No place to run, no place to hide. Brought down at the 23-yard line by Tony McCoy. And the Colts will force the Buccaneers to punt on their first possession. Well, they got out of there with uh, not a great offense once again in the first quarter, but they did get out of there without turning the ball over. Here's Sean Landetta, who's had to come in after they lost their, their real good punter. Punter was injured uh, trying to make a tackle. Tommy Barnard, who was hurt up in Green Bay, broke a collarbone, so he's gone. Ryan Stabline from Ohio State is deep back. A wobbly punt, not very long, and in traffic, Stabline makes the catch after the 38-yard punt. So the Colts will get it with pretty good beginning field position at the 40-yard line. McCoy saw that with a nice defensive play. Scoreless in Indy. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mazda. Come see what happens when a car company has more engineers and fewer accountants. Mazda, 
by Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are hey, beer, man, and by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. So the Buccaneers punt the first time they have it. Quarterback is Paul Justin from his own 40-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Jack Crockett is in the backfield, and Justin goes right to work on first down, gets out of traffic, throws a pass, which is through the hands and maybe a little bit high for running back Marshall Folk. And Justin has to scrape himself off the floor. Today he makes his fifth career start. Coming off a career-high day of 243 yards passing last week in San Diego. Pretty good offensive line, but a couple of rookies. Meadows at the tackle, Glenn at the guard with Wydell. Lewenberg is the best on the line, and the former Packer, Tony Mandarich. Falk and Crockett in the backfield. Dawkins and Harris in the wide receivers. And the emerging star at tight end is Ken Dilger. On the 40-yard line, second down and 10 yards to go. And the handoff goes to Zach Crockett. First year as a starter, third-year player out of Florida State. And he picks up a yard on the play, setting up third and long. The defense, it's a base 4-3, Ahana 2, Culpepper, Sapp, and Upshaw. As good a young group as you'll find league-wide in the linebacking core. Rufus Porter, the former Seahawk, Nickerson, and Derek Brooks leads the team in tackles. Abraham and Parker are the cornerbacks. Mincy and the hard-hitting John Lynch are the safeties. It's third down and nine in the scoreless first quarter. Low snap. It's loose and picked up by the Buccaneers. A fumble by Indianapolis as Reagan Upshaw covers up the loose you ball and the first the turnover of the game on a bad snap from center Jay Lewenberg. Well, I was watching Paul Justin. I promise you, Paul Justin is injured from the very first play. He can barely walk off the field, and I think it probably on this low snap, he couldn't move, he couldn't get to the football. And they're real, real lucky. Upshaw should have scored on that. He should have tried to pick that up and run that thing in. Meadows put his hand down on him because uh, Reagan Upshaw could have picked that up and ran that thing in. So a bad snap from Lewenberg. The center gives the Buccaneers first down and 10 yards to go from the 21-yard line. Done in motion out of the backfield. Dilker, short drop, quick throw, the tight end with another reception on the play as he takes it all the way to the 12. It's a gain of nine, and the catch is made by Dave Moore. He came into the game today with just six receptions. He's already got two in the first seven minutes of the game. And that's a first and ten pass. And when they set this back in motion, that left only a linebacker to cover the tight end because that linebacker had to run all the way outside for the back in motion. Nice design, and you have to throw on first and ten to get this offense going again. Second down and one, the sweep to Dunn, gets a block and is crawling inside the 10, gets as far as the eight yard line, picking up four, it's a first down as Ellis Johnson, the former number one pick, makes the stop. But Dunn has great quickness, good speed, but he doesn't bring a lot of weight in there, and you could see he's the thin man. When he ran up in there, there was no big heavy hitting, but he did run in there with some quickness. Jerry, he's only 5'8". A lot of people speculate that because he was so short is the reason why he fell in the draft. He was as good a running back as there was in college football, but he went all the way to number 12, and Tampa Bay was lucky to get him there. Well, I think 5'8 wasn't the biggest deterrent as his weight. You know, 178 pounds in this league isn't a lot with those big defensive players hitting you. Ellis Johnson is the player down for the Colts. He's at the 10-yard line. He's the one who made the tackle on Warwick Dunn. Ellis Johnson has come off the field with a bad cap, but they carry him off. So the Buccaneers, who are pretty good inside the red zone, with a first and goal at the nine. Bernard Whittington takes the place of the injured Ellis Johnson. Mike Allstott is in the backfield and two tight ends for Tampa Bay. This is the fullback, Allstott, who pierces the line and runs into the teeth of the Colt defense and picks up three before free safety Jason Belzer makes the stop. When you go to one back and two tight ends, if you're going to run up inside, a guard has to pull. Watch the right guard, George Diaz. He has to pull, lead up through the hole, and a nice cleanup block. He puts a big hit on Dan Footman and gives a little bit room for the back to get that first down. 
couple tight ends still. Second down goal from the six. All stop again. And he plows his way down to the one-yard line, moving a pile and picking up five in the process. Well, you called it moving the pile. The whole Colt defensive line got pushed back three, four yards. Excellent job up front by Jim Pine, Tony Mayberry. They moved the interior of that Colt defense who just lost a good player, Ellis Johnson. Frank Middleton, 73, just checks in. He is a backup guard, but he'll be a tackle eligible. It is third down and goal. This was set up by an Indianapolis fumble from the one-yard line. The tight end with the lead block. Allstock dives in for the touchdown. And the Buccaneers cash in on a Colt turnover. And it's 6-0 Tampa Bay. Excellent job of leaping. Allstock's a big, heavy guy that you, I thought would stay on the ground longer, but he's got that athletic ability to go ahead and make the leap up and over. Watch where his feet go. Wow, that's a long leap. That's three and a half yards. Excellent job. He's looking around to see if he's in. He's in. That's 250 pounds missling through the air. <laughs> Michael Husted, who has had some extra point problems. He's missed three this year after missing just one in his previous four years. Steve Wallace will hold, and the kick is up. And the kick is good. And the Buccaneers cash in on a Colt fumble. Mike Allstott from a yard away hurdles his body into the end zone. It's Tampa Bay 7. Colts nothing. Buccaneers have struck first. A recovered Indianapolis fumble. They go in in five plays, 21 yards. And Allstott with a yard away hurdle that pulls them on top 7 nothing over the winless Indianapolis Colts. Well, talking to the Colts players, this, this couldn't have been the, the best thing for them. I think they're very emotionally spent. They're wondering if they're ever going to win one, and then you start off with that big fumble. Ensuing kickoff by Michael Husted, picked up by Aaron Bailey, a reserve wide receiver inside the five-yard line, and the special teams of the Bucks knock him down at the 12-yard line. Special teams have been a concern for the Bucks of late. As Ellis Johnson is carted off the field. Colts get it back. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Enjoy today's game with the Edge Pizza. New from Pizza Hut. 16 pieces of pure topping. Have you been to the Edge? From the 12-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for the Colts, trailing 7-0, and the handoff goes to Marshall Falk for the first time today, and he's out to the 15-yard line, picking up three and brought down by left cornerback Donnie Abraham, an injured Paul Justin in the first series. Well, the very first play of the game, Justin went back to pass, and Reagan Upshaw hits him and hyperextends his knee. Watch the hit right on his right knee. Look at that thing folding. He could not barely walk the next two plays. I think that's one reason he couldn't pick up that bad snap in the shotgun. Lipping real bad right now. Second out and seven with two tight ends. Justin will drop back to throw. Winds up throwing deep and he's got his receiver. Caught by Marvin Harrison to the 41 of the Buccaneers. One of the longest plays of the season for the Colts. It's good for 39 yards and that is a season high through the air. One-on-one -on -one catch against Donnie Abraham. Donnie's not in too bad shape, but Harrison has the step on him. And luckily, Donnie's able to push him out of bounds. He squatted a little bit. He didn't turn his hips over quick enough. And he got a little bit beat on that play by squat. He thought it was going to be a break to the outside. First down and 10 to go and the handoff goes to Marshall Falk who takes it down to the 36 yard line picks up three it'll be second down right now for McDonald's game break let's return to Joe Buckler Fox Television Center in Hollywood all right Kevin in Chicago big fullback Larry Bowie his first career touchdown powering five yards for a Washington score Bears fans are quiet the four and four skins are up by 14 early back to Indy Kevin and Jerry Bowie was undrafted out of Georgia be out Mark Logan this year. Now he starts in the backfield. Second down and five. Seven nothing here with the Buccaneers on top. Draw play handoff. Zach Crockett got a block from Andrich. Takes it for a first down to the 26 yard line. John Lynch the stop. It's a gain of 10. A great job by Lynch. 
Lynch was able to get off the block to stop Crockett from going the distance. Lynch is sitting back about seven, nine yards. Red pass first. And right there gets off a good a, a block by Tarek Glenn and is able to get the tackle. Otherwise, that was a touchdown. Falk has become a receiver at the top of your screen on first and ten. And that play has stopped before it had a chance to start. Well, the whole line moved and the ball wasn't snapped. So usually the center didn't have the snap count on that one. And the center is Jay Lewinberg. He's already had a bad snap today. Before the snap. There was a false start on the offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. It remains first down. Rookie Tarek Glenn. Tarek's big enough that if he moves or cheats, everybody's going to see him. <laughs> 78, the right guard. 345 pounds. He has not missed many meals. No. Nope. And he's part of the future for the Colts with starting two young rookie offensive linemen. Blitz, blitz. Move it back five, first and 15. The blitz is on. Justin is whacked in the pass, is dropped by running back Marshall Falk, who for a second consecutive play ended up as a wide receiver, and Justin has taken a beating. I think Justin quarter. may be out after this play because you got a blitzer untouched, untouched blitzer. Nobody's anywhere near him. You can't let big men run free for a big smack. And Justin has still been over. And listen what's in back of Justin, who today is making his fifth career start, and he is down now on his knee at the 37-yard line. The backup is Kelly Holcomb, who has never played in the regular season. There he is. And they signed Kerwin Bell, who is coaching Little League football in Florida. There he is, number 12. He was cut in preseason after losing the job to Holcomb. And Jim Harbaugh, of course, is out. And, Jerry, you talked with Harbaugh yesterday for about 20 minutes out because of the scuffle last week in San Diego with Jim Kelly. I did. One thing he didn't know, that was Rufus Porter. There's, there's Jim Harbaugh there. The Tampa Bay free blitzer was Rufus Porter. On touch coming in there. And maybe, uh, maybe Kelly should get in here and play quarterback for this team and see how he likes to get hit. You can't turn people loose. Big people. Rufus Porter is big enough. Everybody should see him with nobody assigned to him. I would never question Harbaugh's toughness. I'd never question if he's injured, he's injured. There's Rufus Porter. He was the one that came in. So Justin will at least leave for one play. And he hurt his knee on the first play of the game. And he's got a big brace on that, as you can see right there. What I don't like is his left hand and arm is quivering. That usually means something is dislocated. Here's the hit. Watch Rufus Porter. You cannot let big men come free. And, and he slammed him down oh on that man. shoulder. And that's a rookie left tackle, Adam Meadows. What I don't like is his hand and arm is trembling. And when he gets, who know he's howling at. Don't be howling at anybody unless you're howling at your own offensive line, Paul. Or the running back who is not back there to help. Well, the, the running back went to the right. That means the line's got to slide to the left. Unless the running back made a mistake. But you shouldn't holler at Rufus. Rufus is doing exactly what he's told to do. And he put a good, clean, legal hit on him. So here's Kelly Holcomb, one year out of Middle Tennessee State, was on the Colts practice squad last year. He was signed and waived by Tampa Bay four times. So he's familiar with the Bucks. Second, he's going to get a lot more familiar here in just a second. Second down and 15, drop play, pocket. There go flags, and pocket slithers his way to the 23 before John Lynch makes the stop after a gain of eight. Penalty is against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Looked like the right defensive end, Reagan Upshaw, jumped off sides. What's happening with the Colts, they're going to four wide people. They're spreading the formation so that Tampa Bay cannot run an eight-man front. You can't run an eight-man front when you spread the formation, and that's why they're seeing daylight on the running game. Offsides on the defense, the right end, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Right end is Steve White. Reagan Upshaw is there, number 91. And there you see Kelly Holcomb. Never has played in a regular season game until today. Jerry, as a former coach, is it better to have a guy who's going to make his first appearance in a game know all week about it or to be thrown into the fire like this without a chance to think about it? Sometimes they do better when they haven't had a chance to be frightened, scared, or nervous. <laughs> that kind of sums up you every Sunday. <laughs> Look, I see, look at that left arm. Look at that left hand. 
Plus, he got his knee hyperextended on the first play. So Justin is gone. Harbaugh is out. Second down and 10. Crockett gets the call, and he is mauled at the 26. After a gain of a yard, Hardy Nickerson was there. Well, the Colts went back to a conventional formation. Look at that arm. The Colts went back to a conventional formation. You cannot run on a two-back set against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're too good on defense. Why, why is that? They're, they swarm too much. They, the more people, here, this is uh, this is Paul Justin walking through the back on his way probably to get an x-ray. Halloween two days late for Justin. Seventh play of the drive, set up a big pass to Harrison. Third down and 10. On the shotgun, Holcomb. Good time, and the throw a little bit wide and uncaught by Marvin Harrison. Donnie Abraham was covering a hard-hitting cornerback. He was there with the play, and the defense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will hold the Colts to a three-point try. I want you to look. There's no backs back here. They got one, two, three, four, five wide receivers, so they're trying to open up the formation, hoping that they'll, that'll allow them to find some holes, but I think uh, you better put some people in there for protection. If your quarterbacks are all getting knocked down and injured, you better add people for protection. All pro Kerry Blanchard will try a 43 yard attempt. Gardaki the punter on the hold and the kick is up and the kick is good. So Blanchard five years out of Oklahoma State in the Pro Bowl last year with his holder Gardaki the punter with the Colts on the board and now it is seven to three here late in the first quarter from the Dome in Indianapolis. Folks, a reminder coming up next on our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. It continues with one of the biggest and most talked about games of the season. As the Dallas Cowboys take on the San Francisco 49ers live from Freecom Park. Next, right here on Fox. San Francisco comes in with one loss. The only loss of the season to these same Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Coach Tony Dungeon. Well, everybody wondered after that game if Tampa Bay was very good or if the 49ers had slid a little bit. And I think what we had was a combination of both. I think that game was a wake-up call for the 49ers. And, of course, they've strung out seven wins in a row against absolutely no one. All they're beating up is NFC West teams. Who, there's nobody there can play other than the 49ers. Reedell Anthony, the rookie wide receiver, is deep back at about the goal line, awaiting the kickoff from former Chicago Bear Chris Gardaki. The Colts get on the board with the 43-yard field goal, set up by a 39-yard pass play to Marvin Harrison. And Anthony from the goal line for the Bucks. Second time he's returned to kickoff today, and he's out near the 17-yard line. Nice swarming special teams by the Colts as Marcus Powell was there. Well, Lindy told us to watch Marcus Powell. He said he's a backup defensive end, but does an excellent job on special teams. When you can make tackles in the 1990s on kickoffs inside the 20, you got good coverage. Every year, you know, the league moves the ball back farther, so it's harder and harder to make that tackle inside the 20-yard line. And they move it back because they want returns. They want to see returns. They want to see the excitement of a return. On the 17-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Dilker goes right to work, and he's going deep, looking for the rookie Anthony, and it's incomplete. To make it Horace Copeland downfield, who missed the entire 96 season with the left knee. A little bit long was Dilker, second down and 10. Unusual, I like what they're doing. They're passing on first and 10 and trying to go downtown. Watch the right tackle for Tampa Bay against Fontenot. This is Jason Modem. And he gets in a little trouble, so the ball had to come out early. I think Dilford could feel that he was in getting pressure off that backside. What kind of arm does he have? Strong arm. I think why he's successful. You got a strong arm, you got a person with character, and you got a guy that'll study that loves to play football. Sooner or later, all that comes to the top, and you end up with a good quarterback. It was a yard gain in a second and ten pitch to Warwick Dunn. That sets up third down and nine late in the first quarter with the Buccaneers on top by four. Warwick Dunn has slowed down these last few weeks from all the success they had early. And you're hoping that the small body is not becoming real tired. What happens to little bodies in the National Football League, when they get hit by big guys, they wear out. It's not a college season. It's not 10, 11 games. It's a long haul. They run them a lot. Third down and nine. 
Dilfer, pocket fumbles, and he's on the move and being chased by McCoy and brought down by Al Fontenot, number 99. The former Chicago Bear, who's in his fifth year out of Baylor, comes up with his second sack of the season, and the Buccaneers have got a punt. Well, if you ever saw a coverage sack, this is it. Four wide receivers. One comes in for protection. I like what the Tampa Bay did there. They slide him out. But look at how everybody, look how everybody is shut out. They have pitched a shutout, and that's caused the sack. That is a coverage sack. Here's Sean Landetta. Sean's gained a little weight since the last time we've seen him. Ryan, the Rams. Ryan Stabline is deep back. It's a rocket very high. And Stabline is blocked at the 50-yard line. And it's a punt of 34 yards. Greg Belisari, who is a rookie out of Ohio State, just said hello to a former Buckeye wow. teammate, Stabline. Well, Belisari rang Stabline's bell. Face on face. Watch the face. Buckeye against Buckeye. Buckeye, wham. Hello. Man. I'm going to show it to you one more time. This is not slow-mo. This is how it happens. That's why they don't pay you enough to return kicks. <laughs> well, there may be more emphasis on special teams now than ever before. I think with uh, not having teams uh, with you long, players getting up and leaving free agency, that your coverage teams have become more and more important. Kelly Holcomb from the own 49 will hand off on first down and 10 yards to go, and it goes to Marshall Falk, who picks up three yards over the right side of his offensive line. Chidi Ahanatu. We talked with him yesterday. Makes the stop. What a great visit with Chidi, and, and he wonders if everybody knows that he's on this football team. He's he's surrounded by such good football players as Culpepper and Sap that Chidi says sometimes they don't know I'm out there. But if you watch film, you know he's there. Watch 72. He shucks off the tight end. Ken Delger, tight end blocking on Chidi Ahanatu ought to be legal. There won't be anybody blocking him. Former sixth round pick, Kelly Holcomb, second down and seven. Some movement. There goes a flag as the handoff went to Zach Crockett. And we stopped that play in mid-motion. With 122 to play here in the first quarter from the dome in Indianapolis. Before the snap, false start on the offense. Number 85, five yards, second down. Third year tight end, Ken Dilgan. Well, the reason Ken is jumping, it's the defensive front. He's got to go block Cheedy. And he's not going to do it unless he, he cheats. He's got to cheat to get Cheedy. So he's going to try to leave early. I don't like when your defensive end has to block, uh, your, a tight end has to block a defensive end. I do the cha-cha with Cheedy. Oh, man, it, it's a mismatch. I used to always think we could win if we could get him the four-step blocking scheme. With the penalty, second down and 12. Holcomb down the middle. High, yet caught. Spectacular catch made by Sean Dawkins. Fifth-year wide receiver out of Cal. It's a pickup of 22, and that'll go a long way to helping the confidence of young quarterback Kelly Holcomb. Well, Kelly had a nice ball. It was a little high, but it had a good ball. Watch the slot receiver. He's out of our pitcher. He comes back into the pitcher. A little high, but a nice grab by Sean Dawkins. Watch him go up. Beating Anthony Parker. Another good corner for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So his first NFL completion goes for a first down and 23 yards. It's first and 10 from the 30-yard line. Zach Crockett. Kyle drive. Up the middle and gains five. Down to the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Chidi Ahanatu of the Buccaneers. I want to show you the whole formation, Kevin. Why is there daylight for the first time for the Colts? It's because of this formation. They're spread all out. I call it four wides. Wide out, wide out, wide out, wide out. So now they can only play a 4-1 inside. Spreads out that defense. Well, there's only five people in there now. Five people, it cleans up for the offensive line. It cleans up. They can find who the block. It's five on five, and you're going to find some daylight. So the starting quarterback is knocked out of the game for Indianapolis, and a kid who has never played in a regular season game, leading the Colts against the Buccaneers. Back in the Dome in Indianapolis with Jerry Glanville. This is Kevin Harlan. Buccaneers on top after recovering a Colt fumble. 21 yards, a one-yard touchdown leap by Mike Allstott. A Colt field goal. It's 7-3 at the end of one. And we start the second quarter with a second down and five. Colts at the Buccaneer 25. Kelly Holcomb, the former Buccaneer quarterback, throws and completes the pass to Marvin Harrison. His second catch today. And it picks up about four on the play. 
And it's what they're doing, they're helping this young quarterback with a two-step drop. It's one, two, throw, so nobody can hit him. They're about out of quarterbacks getting them hit so much. So they go into a, they call it a three-step. I say it's two steps and throw. Watch it, watch his feet. One, two, throw. And that'll stop uh, the good pressure. Warren Sapp was already coming in there. In fact, he'd already beat Doug Wydell on a two-step, so that's how they can save the quarterback. Good look in motion. Really, a guy hadn't played much. This is going to be fun to watch him. We're down in one from the 21. And it's a first down run by Marshall Falk, who is coming off a career-low yard game of 11 yards last week in San Diego, but he carves out a first down, and the Colts are on the move early in the second quarter. And he carved it out against a jammed-up defense. They had normal formation this time with two backs in there, and Lynch came flying out of that secondary. Lynch came flying up to put a good hit on Marshall Falk. First round pick, four years out of San Diego State. First down and ten. Crockett gets the call, keeping his balance inside the five-yard line to the four. John Lynch made the stop, but a flag thrown on the play. There was movement on the line. Now it was the referee's view to see if the Buccaneers were induced. I watched the reverse pivot by the rookie quarterback all the way out for a simple dive. A simple dive cannot be any simpler, but a good cut block by that rookie left tackle, Adam Meadows. Wow, he's in the secondary. Inadvertent flag. There is no call. There is no penalty. So it's first and goal from the four-yard line. Crockett shuffles. Falk gets the call. Marshall Falk into the end zone. Touchdown. The Colts have the lead. Nice blocking by Zach Crockett. He picked up the outside force man, and first time Falk's able to run on through there. Extra point by Kerry Blanchard on the Gardaki hole. And a new score from Indianapolis. A young quarterback marching into the defense of the Buccaneers. Falk from four yards away, and it's Indianapolis by three. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? And by the U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. The winless Indianapolis Colts lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 10-7, a four-yard touchdown run by Marshall Falk, set up on a 23-yard pass completion to Sean Dawkins. That's the third rushing touchdown this year for the Colts. Cardocki's ensuing kickoff. And picked up by Anthony, two yards deep, and the rookie from Florida will take it out. He finds a seam, and there he goes! Cardocki in pursuit, and he trips him up. The kicker trips up the return man, Redell Anthony. And Cardocki's slow to get up, but a great return on the play for Anthony, who got it two yards deep and returns it 51 yards. And a great tackle by Gardaki, because this is a touchdown without the kicker being the safety. Here's the kicker. He's the safety. Stop anything. Don't allow a home run. Now he's in position. And watch Gardaki swat his feet, and he swatted one foot into the other. That's exactly how you teach to bring a guy down from behind. And the Buccaneers have never had in the history of their franchise a kickoff returned for a touchdown. But we almost saw it right there. On first and ten, Delfer goes right to work. Being chased by McCoy. He throws a pass incomplete downfield and looking for wide receiver Carl Williams. It'll be second down and ten. Well, Tampa Bay is doing something they haven't been doing the last few weeks. First and ten pass, but they're not having any success doing it. Why the change? Well, I think they thought what we did. They were being so conservative in the early quarters, they had to open it up, and they're trying to open it up, but they're finding absolutely nobody open in the secondary. Perfect balance right now. Three runs and three passes on first and ten. 
Second down and 10 from the 49 of Tampa Bay a long cadence by Dilfer resulting in a handoff to Allstock got a block and curls his way back to the middle of the field. He's down to the 43 yard line. Nice hole opened up by Jason Modem. It's a gain of about seven and a half. That'll set up third down. Well there was body lean and as Allstock watching him on that play he was looking for contact Kevin and nobody hit him for about eight yards and he kept waiting for some contact. Third down and three, 10 to seven. The Colts on top early in the second quarter. Good time for Dilfer. Throws, but short of the first down. It's caught by rookie Patrick Haight. Just his third reception of the year. Dilfer is short. It'll bring up fourth down and about two and a half, and they're going to go for the punt. And a good coverage by Elijah Alexander in the middle. Outside linebacker had to be moved to the inside, and he had the coverage. He had the tight end shut out. So the Buccaneers can't exploit the 51 yard kickoff return by Anthony Stabline hopes for the same kind of return for the Colts as he awaits the kick from Sean Landetta second consecutive three and out for the five and three Buccaneers high it'll be inside the 10 and down near the five yard line a great play by the special teams Rob Thomas a journeyman wide receiver lassos the 40 yard punt and the Colts are but their backs against the wall. Just a few hours away tonight on Fox. With Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan from the five. Young Kelly Holcomb with the first and ten. It's a handoff to Zach Crockett. Third round pick in 95 out of Florida State. Picks up four yards, setting up second down and six. Right now, a McDonald's game break. Back to Hollywood and Joe Buck. Kevin, they're trading the lead down in Atlanta after falling behind the Falcons 7-3. The Rams move 85 yards on four plays, capped in the 16-yard touchdown run by Lawrence Phillips. The Rams lead by three in the second quarter. Back to Indianapolis, Kevin Harlan and Jerry Glanville. Thank you, Joe. Second down, seven here with the Colts on top, 10-7. Holcomb, pocket crumbles, throws away, pass caught by tight end Ken Dilger. Second round pick out of Illinois, eighth reception of the season he picks up five and there you see the starter all Justin knocked out with a, a shoulder a wrist a leg and about everything else you can think of and Hulk Holcomb he was standing in his end zone I think he's so young he didn't realize he was in the end zone with Tampa Bay people all around him through another good pass never played in a regular season game until today cut signed cut signed cut signed Three, four times by Tampa Bay. Third and one handoff to Zach Crockett, and he muscles his way close to a first down near the 15 yard line. They began this back at the five, so they're trying to dig out of a hole and get some breathing space for second year head coach Lindy and Funny. While visiting with Lindy, he has a great attitude about just go to work and try to dig your way out, don't surrender. He said, all I can do is work as hard as I can do every day, and that's what I'm doing. Fired up in Green Bay, took a couple years off, went down, built his own house down in Jacksonville, Florida, got his golf handicap from about a 15 to an 8. Came back here for <laughs> Ted March Broda, offensive coordinator for him, took over last year as the head coach, and he's in his second year now. Well, you know you're not coaching if you got a handicap of 8. <laughs> you got too much time on your hands. They get it by the length of a football. That guy was missing some fingers there for a second. Well, the fingers popped out after the first down signal. Thank goodness. Tony Dungy, longtime defensive coordinator at Kansas City and Minnesota, and Pittsburgh Steelers under Chuck Knoll. He's had a variety of head coaches that he has learned under, watched coach. Now in his second year and has turned down the program around in Tampa. Said he learned the most from uh, Chuck Knoll. Of all the people he worked for, Chuck Knoll was the best teacher that he was around. First and ten handoff goes to Marshall Falk, who picks up three. It'll set up second down and seven. First two years in the NFL, Falk, 1,000 yards both years. But last year, 500 yards in 13 starts. Jerry, he has not had a 100-yard game at all this season. I think it's more the formation, more the offensive philosophy than it is Marshall. 
The fact they want to throw the ball, the fact he's going out in motion right now, out of the running game. Second down, seven, and Holcomb has to eat the football at the 11-yard line. Losing seven on the play, Warren set, makes the sack. The third consecutive game, he has brought down an opposing quarterback. Now seven sacks on the season. Third year out of Miami. And their head coach, Tony Dungy, said he's the man that makes it all happen. Even when the other linemen get a sack, saps the guy back there stirring the mess up. So a loss on the sack, third and 14. And Holcomb from the shotgun formation with pretty good time, throws the pass. And it's caught at the 22-yard line, but shy of a first down. They needed to get to the 25. Picking up 11 yards is reserve running back Lamont Warren. So the Colts can't convert, and they've got to punt the ball. But Kelly did a good job standing in there. Again, good pressure always from this Tampa Bay defense. And Kelly, the young quarterback who's never played, stood right in there. I watched his feet. His feet never moved. And let that ball come out of there. Well, you got time. You got time. Radaki hopes he has time. Pro Bowler from a year ago, punting to Carl Williams back at about the 35-yard line. Gardaki sends up a rocket picked wow. up by Williams at the 28-yard line, and there he goes. Carl Williams, a surprise a year ago, has got one to beat. That's from on one angling in and makes the touchdown saving tackle at the 10. Well, that's a shock because it was as good a punt as you could ever see. Excellent punt, excellent hang time, but he got by the first one on his own. Good job of not clipping. The coverage just wasn't down there. And it's been these kinds of returns on the Buccaneers over the last couple years, a 63-yard return here by Carl Williams that is hurt. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Green Bay returned to punt 46 yards. Detroit returned to punt 40 yards. Vikings last week returned one 57 yards. Now the Buccaneers lashing back themselves. So they get the huge return, setting up first and goal inside the 10. Mike Allstock goes into the pile and picks up a couple near the seven. Not the big push up front that they had going the other way. Go back to when Tampa Bay was heading the other way. We said they had such a big push in the line. Wasn't much push that time, so you got to admire the the Colts defense. Even though they got behind the game, then they came back and got ahead. Now they get a big punt return on them. They're still mustering up a good fight. Jim Johnson, who's the defensive coordinator, trying to watch his troop work on quarterback Trent Dilfer. Second down and goal from the seven. All stopped by himself in the backfield. Tight end Heap is in motion. Dilfer. Running out of the pocket, the blitz was on. Dilfer inside the five and near the two-yard line as he has run out of bounds and chased by linebacker Bert Berry. He gained five yards. He showed excellent speed here because they were after him. They were chasing him. Watch him get away. He's going to have pressure from behind that he feels. He's being chased by a defensive safety, Jason Belser. That's a defensive back trying to catch him. Most quarterbacks can't get away from a defensive back. They were coming with the blitz. Comes from behind. He feels Belser coming. Excellent athletic play by Trent Dilfer. So Look back, Phil. This is a pass. Done and all stuff. Third and goal from the two. You're right, Jerry. To the end zone. Dilfer, touchdown, Tampa Bay. Dave Moore with a two-yard touchdown reception. And the Buccaneers reclaim the lead halfway through the second quarter. And Jim Johnson's defense can't hold out Dungy and the Buccaneers. Well, that was too easy. The split backfield, as you heard me holler, that told everybody it's a throw. How do you let the tight end just go down and turn inside when everybody's telling you it's a pass, it's a pass. This formation tells you it's a pass, and this tight end just does a hook. That's a bust. Somebody totally busted the defense. Everybody's looking around, and Steve Morrison, the young outside linebacker, I don't know if it was his, but... They should have had a man-to-man -man on the tight end in that formation. Every extra point is a battle for Houston, who puts it up and converts. So a 63-yard punt return by Carl Williams sets up a two-yard touchdown pass, and the Buccaneers back on top. 
Dave Moore today taking the place of starting tight end Jackie Harris. Brings in his second touchdown reception of the season. Set up on a 63-yard punt return by Carl Williams. And it's 14-10 Tampa Bay against the winless Colts. Kickoff. Houston. Aaron Bailey will leave it in the end zone. And for Houston, he has now had touchbacks in nine of his last ten kickoffs. Is that right? Welcome to Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Enjoy today's game with the Edge Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. 16 pieces of pure toppings. Have you been to the Edge? In the Dome in Indianapolis with Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan, Kelly Holcomb. Taking the place of the injured Paul Justin, who is taking the place of the injured Jim Harbaugh. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Holcomb right to work, goes to his running back, Zach Crockett, breaks the tackle, he's out near the 30-yard line. Close to a first down before Rufus Porter makes the stop on Zach Crockett. There's Porter. He makes the stop seven years in Seattle, two in New Orleans, first year with the Buccaneer defense. Two-time Pro Bowler. What you see is the athletic ability of Zach Crockett. You sit in the open. Where's the team that went to the championship game two years ago? These are the players that could make the plays, and they still have that athletic ability to keep making those plays. Second down and a yard. Marshall Falk sent up the middle, gets the first down as he takes it up to the 32-yard line and picks up three yards as Hardy Nickerson, former Pittsburgh Steeler, makes the stop. And a good crowd. The crowd cheering for the first team making the first down. Still putting up a... A fight here. I'm impressed that the Colts got behind and came back and then got ahead. I thought with the way their spirits were when we talked to them in the locker room, I thought they got behind. They'd have a hard time keeping playing, but full credit to them. They're still playing hard. First down from the 32-yard line. Play action inside. Holcomb moving up in the pocket. Deflected pass and incomplete. As he was going down the middle, had the presence to move in. He had hit his last five until that pass right there. Had good pressure on him, but I, I like the way the young offensive line tries to protect this quarterback. There's pressure, and then they gobble the pressure up. Oh, actually, good job there by Marshall Falk picking him off also. Marcus Jones, the nose tackle, 78, leaping high and almost had it. Throwing everything at this young quarterback. Dropping the defensive tackle all the way back in the secondary. Second down and 10. Good time. High and incomplete. Ricochets off the fingertips of receiver Marvin Harrison. It'll be third and 10. And the offensive line for the Colts has, you know, caught a lot of grief because the quarterback's been getting hit. But excellent protection again here against Sapp. That's Doug Wydell. Gets a little bit of help, of course, from Jay Lundberg. Jay Lundberg is what I call the best helper center in the National Football League. If he doesn't have anybody, he'll come over and whack somebody that's working over your guard or tackle. Colts have to get out beyond their 42. Third down and 10. Blitz. blitz. From the shotgun. Faces the blitz. Runs outside. Gets away from Sepp. And throws downfield to Dawkins. He drops the ball as Holcomb threw into double coverage. Now, I want to tell you, that's a touch pass. All kinds of things were happening to Kelly, and Kelly knew he couldn't drill it, that the coverage was tight. He had a lob it, and he changes his whole delivery. First of all, he gets out of trouble, all out blitz on him. They got everybody covered. He's in the scramble. Now, this is an excellent touch throw. This is the only chance he had of throwing this air ball. He's trying to drop this down the well, and he puts the ball right there. That's a great job by the young quarterback, Kelly Holcomb. Gardaki to punt. Second consecutive punt. Carl Williams deep back. Returned the last punt. 63 yards. Gardaki sends it way up in the Raptors. Carl Williams from the 15-yard line. Runs outside and is tripped up. Out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Chris Hetherington, his second tackle on special teams today. That's a punt of 53 yards with the return of 15 for Carl Williams. I don't know if I've ever seen better punts. Have you, Kevin? And Cardonkey's doing perfect situation inside a dome. No wind, no elements to contend with. Well, our athletic trivia question today: Ward Dunn is on pace to set a Buccaneer rookie record for total yards from scrimmage. Who owns the current record? 
can let you chew on that, Mr. Glanville. <laughs> I think I know. I think he's in the building. From the 30-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go, Mike Allstock. He played at Purdue in nearby Lafayette, Indiana. Gets three yards on first down. Got 25 after they touched him. Play was dead, of course. Wanderahi, special teams player for the Colts, who has done a nice job and a rookie they like a great deal from Arizona State. Second down and seven. Two tight ends in for the Buccaneers who are trying to stop a three-game losing streak today. Allstott again. Jason Belzer came up from the safety and limits Allstott to a gain of two. This formation that they're running is a bootleg formation. They have not come with a bootleg. They're running the two tights, two wides, and one back. And they're pounding Allstott in there. But I want you to catalog. I want you right down next to your couch. That's a bootleg formation. And sooner or later, we're going to see a big bootleg out of that, that set. Before you go. Third down and five. Four wides, Kevin. Short drop back, Delfer throws, broken up beautifully by Diedrich Mathis, and a flag thrown across the way at the 45. It was intended for Horace Coker. Well, D Diedrich Mathis had a full press bump and run. I don't know if they threw the flag. Pass interference against the defense, number 23. Automatic. It looked, it looked from up here that he had the full bump before the five yards. Let's take a look. And see here he is let's see if he backs up past the five yards all right that's legal but then he held him on they the shoulder had, had him, but what did they call illegal bumper did they call pass interference he, he he stretched the jersey if it's illegal bump they're wrong because the bump was in the five yards now he did once you stretch the jersey you're holding on mathis can't believe that anything was called second year players second round draft choice from Houston a season ago Buccaneers again will go with two tight ends Tony Dungy told us before the game they want to run the ball as much as they can they lead it 14 to 10 first and 10 handoff all start again up the middle it takes three Colts to bring him down after a gain of nine up to the 49 yard line Robert Blackman finally drove him down. I want you to be the linebacker and tackle this guy, Kevin. <laughs> Here we are. This is the end zone. This is uh, this is you sitting in your living room. You go make the tackle. This is you. Come on up there. Come on. We're not getting enough help out of the living room. It takes everybody to get this guy down. You need the couch. Get off the, the couch ottoman. and make the tackle. <laughs> Second down and one from the 49. All start again. And he moves and shoves his way for a first down to the Colt 45. It's a gain of six, and Al Fontenot finally slowed him down. Allstott, who last week against the Vikings, Jerry, six carries, eight yards, is now a story in this game today. And that's the formation. It's the two. I want to show you. Tight end, tight end. Now there's a wide out out here and a wide end out here. This is, remind you, a power running bootleg formation. So we're going to see a bootleg out of this thing. Two tight ends again. Allstott by himself. Allstott again gets the carry. Allstott inside the 40 and a gain of almost 10. Robert Blackman brings him down. It'll be second down and a half yard. Well, I asked Robert Blackman, I said, how about you two safeties? You and Belser making the tackles. He said, we hate to make the tackles when the guy's clean on us. And guess what? He was just clean on Blackman. Two minute warning. Mike Allstott has carried the ball five consecutive times for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and each and every time he is feeling the hits from the Colts' defense. Robert Blackman putting a hit on him. When you're a jackhammer, wow. it doesn't matter. Let the big man play. That's what Dungy's saying right now. They've thrown out the Frisbee ball. <laughs> Sooner or later, let the big men play, letting his offensive line play, and letting the big back run. Second and inches, two-minute warning. Sixth consecutive carry, all stop. And he'll be close to the first down. In fact, if the spot is true right now, he's got it inside the 35 of the Colts. 
Bert Berry, a rookie from Notre Dame, makes the stop number 57. And he made a little cut there. Even though he's a big, big guy that runs over people, he is a cutter. And he made a good cut there. That was a 33 cut. 33 means I run over this guard, but then jump it over. So it's 33. Right now it's 33, and now it's cut. 33 cut. There it is. So he's got that option. He's, that's his option. They'll say in the, in the hole, 33 cut, which means we got a tight end back behind here. You can bring it away from the hole. If there's no tight end over there, Kevin, they'll just say 33. Once there's a tight end, they give you a cut, and you come on back. Well, let's cut to our Affleck trivia question. Warwick Dunn is on pace to set a Buccaneer rookie record for total yards from scrimmage. Who owns the current record? Eric Red. 1,130 yards total, 1994. Rhett was the guy, led the team in rushing his first three years. And there he is, now relegated to special teams. He's only carried eight times this season. Wow, he's the, he's the man that has disappeared in the National Football League. First and 10 pass, tip for the tight end, wide open. Dave Moore inside the 10 and all the way to the Colts' seven yard line. Belzer brings him down after a pickup of 27 yards. And here's a guy that's not the normal starter. Watch the tight end. It's a drop back. Oh, he did good. They were c combo. He just beat the combo coverage with a little fake and go. Elijah Alexander got hooked on that one. Timeout. NFL Sunday, the Cowboys take on the 49ers later today. First and goal from the seven, handoff to Warwick Dunn, who picks up three, second down and goal after the timeout. 1.23 to play in the second quarter, and another timeout taken. And the Colts are out of timeouts. Buccaneers have all three moving in again. They lead 14 to 10. Second down goal from the four, just before halftime. Buccaneers on the move, Allstott in the backfield. This has been a drive offered by Allstott, but he stood up and taken down at the five-yard line. Elijah Alexander, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, makes the stop, assisted by Jason Belson. It'll be third and goal. Elijah, it was either in a blitz or that was an awful quick read because he came across the line as the middle linebacker. He was across the line of scrimmage. Watch him right here. Good job of getting around Mayberry, the center. He actually played the wrong shoulder. Only time you can come in the wrong way, you got to make the tackle, and that's what he did. He, he did not cross the face like he's supposed to, but he made a good play. Buccaneers have all three timeouts. The Colts can't stop it. 40 seconds and ticking, winding down the second quarter right now. Now Dilfer will burn his first timeout of the game. With 38 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, the Dockers, Khakis halftime on deck. Joe Buck and Bill Moss in Hollywood have scores and highlights ready for you. Fox scores with the Fox Sports ticker. And a preview of the Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers from 3 Comp Park. All coming up next on the Dockers, Khakis halftime. Milford came into today with his Buccaneers at 5-3 and three and reeling from three consecutive losses. Jerry, if they were going to make a stand, if they were serious about making a playoff run, they had to win today, and they have to win next week against Atlanta. You have to win the games you're supposed to win. They've already started off with that hot five in a row. Now you've got to win the games you're supposed to win. Third and goal from the six on the tenth play of the drive. Dilfer low and caught for a touchdown, Horace. Make it Carl Williams. His second of the year. A six-yard strike from Dilfer, and the Buccaneers lead it 20 to 10. And Kevin, it was a low strike. The ball was thrown down on the ground below the knees, and Carl Williams went down and got it. I've seen Dilfer throw a lot better passes than that. He should go over and pat Carl Williams on the butt because Carl went down in the ground and dug it up. Williams has had a good day, a punt return of 63 yards, a six-yard touchdown catch right there. Michael Husted will try the extra point. And he puts it up and in on the Steve Walsh hole. Nice play by Carl. Watch Carl go down for the low throw. 
It's one on one. It's not press. You're in a little bit of trouble here. I don't like at all how, how Mathis is playing. You can't play off nine yards when the ball's crossing your end zone. Dilfer couldn't have got him with a fly swatter. He's off so far. That's a joke. I mean, Mathis. Terrible coverage by Mathis, but an excellent job of catching the low ball by Carl Williams. So Dilfer in the offense took over at their own 30 with about five minutes left, 10 plays, and a six yard touchdown pass to Carl Williams. And so it's 21 to 10 Tampa Bay on top and 35 seconds remaining in the first half here from Indianapolis. What gets me on that, Kevin, that was third down, and the corner's off seven, eight yards and stays all the way off, and they're running in the end zone to catch a touchdown. When it's third down, you know it's pass, and that you can't, once they cross your goal line, as a defensive back, you got to play underneath the receiver. Didn't see any of that. Buccaneers scored six points last week, nine points the week before against Detroit, 16 against Green Bay. And with that kind of return yardage, they've been able to set up 21 points. So they are off and running here in the first half. Michael Houston will kick it off. He has had a touchback in every game this year. And he continues that way with his second today. Aaron Bailey will leave it in the end zone. 35 seconds to play. As you see the Dockers khaki halftime, they're getting ready in Hollywood. They're also getting ready in San Francisco, where our pregame show came from today. And they'll cover the Cowboys and the 49ers later this afternoon. That should be a great game. Niners have lost one game to these same Buccaneers. Cowboys need a win in the worst way. Cowboys went out there a couple years ago. From the shotgun, Holcomb. First and ten throw, caught by Brian Stabline, the rookie out of the second year wide receiver out of Ohio State, is out to the 29 yard line, picking up nine. Well, Colts that, have no timeouts. Well, that route's open, but you still got to like Kelly's arm motion in his throw. Throws a good ball. Second down, inches, throws it out of the backfield, caught by Lamont Warren as he reads through traffic and takes it out to the 44. Again, they can't stop the clock. You don't He's have out of timeouts. Time He's asking for a timeout, and that's a rookie. They didn't have any timeouts. Should have thrown the ball on the ground. He should have had a spike, spike play right there. So he picks up 15 yards on that last pass completion to Warren, but that will bring us to halftime is Trent Dilfer. And his counterpart, Paul Justin, dislocated finger on his left hand. He's out for the day as you can obviously see. Hyper extended a knee on the first play of the game. Tony Dungy, Jerry Glanville needed a, a big first half. He needs a win in the worst way for his playoff hopeful Buccaneers. Well, when you have a team that has no success for the whole year like the Colts you tell yourself get that team down as quick as you can get them down and they won't fight back Buccaneers on top 21 10 back to our Fox television centers with the Dodgers khaki halftime following these messages and welcome to the Dodgers halftime Joe Bach and Bill Moss filling in for the guys out in San Francisco get you caught up on the other games around the National Football League the game you're watching Tampa Bay out in front by 11 at the half in Indianapolis, Trent Dilfer, 14 touchdown passes this season, a career high. Bill Moss, how about that Monday night Ooh. momentum for the Bears? Ooh. Go on. Bears slipping back into hibernation, Joe. Absolutely doing nothing. Didn't even show up today. In fact, Curtis Conway, their only big play man, has been ejected for bumping an official. A lot of scoring going on down in Atlanta. Tony Banks hands off to Lawrence Phillips. He scampers for 16 yards. They go out on top. Then it's Chris Chandler comes back. Touchdown pass to Burt Emanuel, his second of the day. This one from 33 yards out. Tony Banks looks for his favorite receiver. Ike Bruce, 29-yard touchdown pass. He hits him again, and it's 24-17 St. Louis on top. Isaac Bruce, or Ike as you like to call him, 193 yards at the half. A big day for the wide receiver for the Rams. How about New England and Minnesota? A game, really, the score wouldn't indicate it, but dominated by the Vikings so far over the AFC champion Patriots. In Buffalo, Miami Dolphins. Dan Marino is 4 for 13. He left the game, apparent left ankle injury. They managed a field goal out of Orlando Mare. 
Linda Mare, the Jets lead by a point in the third quarter over the Baltimore Ravens. Neil O'Donnell back at quarterback and right now a one-point lead for the Jets. Raiders struggling down in Carolina. In Oakland's five losses, one of the players of the opposing team has been named AFC Player of the Week. This week, they're trying to get it to an NFC player. And a 10-point lead for Cincinnati late in the second quarter. The hapless Bengals trying to get back untracked. We will send you back to Indianapolis. Kevin and Jerry standing by. Your game coming up as the Dockers halftime continues. No more game. Welcome back to the Dome in Indianapolis with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on top of the Colts. 21 to 10. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. I think what happened this touchdown, the safety's on the wrong side. There's no tight end here. He's here. When this back flares, he's got to take a man, and that tight end does a hook with nobody around him with a busted alignment. The safety's on the wrong side. Easy touchdown. This next play you're going to love. It's a great job by Dave Moore. Dave's going to come out and juke, and it's a combination coverage. You'll watch Eliza Alexander goes for the interception. Guess what? He takes off after he makes the cut. There's the pick. Nice job. Dave Moore, young tight end, doing a good job. And this next highlight is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. It was a touchdown pass by Trent Dilfer, his second of the day, as he hit Carl Williams. Low, low, low ball, but a nice job by Carl Williams going down, digging out a bad throw. Bill for five of his seven completions are to his tight ends. Moore's got four catches. Patrick Ape has one. And he has, with the two touchdowns today, a career-high 14 touchdown passes on the year. Well, they came out trying to change the offense and throw deep on first and ten. When they were not successful, they've gone back to pounding Mike Allstead on first and ten. There's Trent Dilfer. Best season as a pro, his Buccaneers on top, and Tony Dungy's got to feel pretty good about where they stand because, Jerry, as you know, going up against a winless team, that is a very tough thing for any team to go against. Well, it, it's it's dangerous because they want to get that win, but I think if you get a, a winless team down, it's hard for them to keep fighting and keep coming back. I thought the Colts did a great job all year of fighting and playing hard till last game. Last week against San Diego was the first time I seen them out hustled and out hit. And I think that can happen this time of year if you're still looking for a win. And no Jim Harbaugh. He is out. A kickoff by Houston in the end zone brought out by Aaron Bailey. Two yards. He fumbles the ball and it's loose and recovered at the 12 yard line. It looked as though the Colts jumped on it. And that is the signal. There is a player down at the 23 yard line. But well, Kevin, he fumbled without contact. The ball came out without even being hit. This is Aaron Bailey, number 80. He tripped and fell and was trying to cut back, and the ball came out of his arm without anybody ever laying a glove on him. And Bailey got his own fumble. The rookie Von Der Ahi is being helped off the field. He was the special teams player. Who is down for the Indianapolis Colts and through 30 minutes of football here are our first half numbers from Indy and I think the stat if you're a Tampa Bay fan is the return yards the punt return set up the touchdown only 47 yards for Tampa Bay and 59 Russia which is about normal for the Colts on that side 20 yards better too on where they have started so it's first down and 10 yards to go Kelly Holcomb the former Buccaneer quarterback with the pitch out, Marshall Falk. In the open field, he was tackled by Anthony Parker, a former Viking in Kansas City Chief with Tony Dungy, and he picks up five on the play. It'll be second down and five. And they got a little running room there with a good crack back by the split in. Came down and got Rufus Porter. Second down and a long four, just 45 seconds into our third quarter. Holcomb with the draw play. Zach Crockett rumbling up field and takes it to the 37 yard line before Anthony Parker makes the stop. That was a rumble of 14, make it 19 yards to the first down. And John Lynch got hurt on the play. He came up, tried to make the tackle. He's walking off the field, he's, he's weaving. 
Watch the safety come in from the left hand of your screen right here. He gets hurt right there. Nice run by Crockett. Out of Florida State, third round pick in 1995. John Lynch is out. Tony Bowie is in. Crockett. Went head first and straight down. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Brad Culpepper makes the touch on the defensive line. The only thing I can think with Lynch is maybe he, he put his hand or his arm out there. And somebody, they're, they're looking at his right arm. Wrist. Maybe trying to pull in the arm to get a stinger out of the neck. There he is rolling the neck. And he lit up a stinger, sure enough. Holding on his head. He's got one of those migraines. Second down and 11. Falk in motion out of the backfield. A good block. That sets up Holcomb's pass, which is caught by Sean Dawkins. It is a first down. He's into Buccaneer territory at the 47-yard line, picking up 13. Well, this is Lindy. When Lindy sends a back in motion past a wide receiver, here's a wide. When he goes past a wide receiver, he makes the linebacker then cover a wide receiver. This is classic Lindy, and it's like stealing. It's like cutting cake. Got to make sure that knife is sharp <laughs> when you're cutting the kick. And you take a look at Lindy and Fonny. Welcome's looked pretty good since coming in for the injured Paul Justin. 8 of 12 and 89 yards. On first and 10 here, a little swing pass caught by Marshall Falk. And he has no place to run. Loses a yard on the play. Second down and 11. Hardy Nickerson was there. Along with Rufus Porter, 59. It's called a funnel. When they throw a screen on you, Tampa Bay, one guy will take the outside cuts and one has to take the inside cuts, and you don't overrun it. When they flare the back, the defense has to play. This is called a funnel. He has to stay there, and he's got to stay there. One in. Look at him. That's the funnel. Inside, outside. One guy funnels this way. One guy funnels that way. One guy is only assigned the inside cuts, and the other guy the outside cuts. Play to perfection. Second down 11, there goes a flag. Lynch is back in for the Buccaneers. A little screen pass. Puck, Zach Crockett. He's wet. Ball is loose. Picked up by Marvin Harrison. He's inside the 25. But a flag thrown back at the 50. He had a little bit of everything on that play. And as the play stands right now, it's a gain of 16 yards. Well, I think the, uh, the Buccaneers were in a blitz. I think they jumped offside. So you can turn this penalty down. May have been Reagan Upshaw on the defensive line. When I read his lips. He said 91. It was Upshaw, and it's a first down. Upshaw last week missed the game because of the flu. A little bit too early for Reagan. And Holcomb was good to keep going with the play. First down and 10 yards to go from the 23 yard line of Tampa Bay. Conventional four man rush. Handoff goes to Crockett. And he bowling balls his way for four inside the 20. Well, they're back to doing what they did the first half. They're going to four wide receivers, and Tampa only has five people in the box. They cannot stop the run with five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. These four wideouts have it all spread out. Guess what? You can't stop the run till you go six in there. They only had five, and here come the Colts. So stack the line, much like opposing defenses do against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, what Tampa has to do, they got to say we're going to put six in there and make you throw. And right now they got five in there saying we're going to let you run. Second down and six. Falk was in motion. Holcomb zeroes in on Falk. He'll go to Falk in the end zone. It's overthrown and incomplete. Holcomb was hit hard. John Lynch was covering the running back in motion out of the backfield. Good job by the quarterback. Threw that one away. Kelly, young guy, no experience. Can't figure out how many timeouts he's got, but he knows here he's got to throw this thing away. <laughs> getting, getting a little bit of pressure. Hello. Sign. Hanatu. Holcomb signed and waived by Tampa Bay four times. Played in the World League. Never played in a regular season game until today. They're down in six. From the shotgun, Holcomb. Harrison in motion to the bottom of your screen. Handoff. Out of the shotgun. It's Falk getting a lead block from Doug Wydell. And he'll be shy of the first down as he picks up a meager yard. So it's fourth down. And they're going to try for three. So the Buccaneer defense keeps him out of the end zone. 
Don't try to run wide on Tampa Bay. They're too fast. Watch the run force. Watch Chidi Ahana too. Watch these people run. Why would you run to the boundary? They're going to beat you there with big people. What a great job. Anthony Parker, Chidi Ahana too. These people can run. You got to run right at them. You can't run sideways against the Tampa Bay speed. Great under 40 yards. Kerry Blanchard will try a 36 yarder. He's already knocked one through from 43 today. And with the hole from Chris Gardaki, the kick is good. And the Colts add three more on. So a 19 yard run by Crockett, a 13 yard pass to Dawkins, and a 36 yard field goal. It's 21 13. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Isuzu, builders of the completely reinvented 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu, go farther. By Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Back in the Dome in Indianapolis with Jerry Glanville, this is Kevin Harlan. Chris Gardaki sets to kick off to Redell Anthony. And Anthony from the three-yard line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will take it up to the 22-yard line before he is brought down by Sammy Burroughs, reserve linebacker. Bucks get it, leading 21-13. In Central on Fox, the Buccaneers hope to swarm all over that Colt defense on their own 23. Riding a three-game losing streak. Buccaneers have it. First down and 10 yards to go. And the handoff go, 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 go. goes to Warwick Dunn. Go. Good job, good job, He's good been job. shut down pretty effectively today. He only gained 39 yards last week against the Vikings. Brought down in the middle by Alexander. Today done. Six carries and a meager 12 yards for Tampa Bay. And Alexander's Bay. an outside linebacker. Moved the middle, but he's playing behind a guy, Tony McCoy. And Tony McCoy, look at Tony stay in there and fight. He just buckled. George Diaz and just buckled everybody and helped that middle linebacker look like a real good football player. Tony McCoy, always count on him. Four year starter on that defensive line. Second down and 10. Blitz was on, all stocked up by the group. The flag is thrown as he trudges his way upfield and picks up 17 yards up to the 40 yard line. Well, right now, Robert Belser, I mean, Jason Belser, he, he's wondering what hit him. That's like bringing down a human tractor. It's against Tampa Bay. I like Jason Belser. We interviewed him. He's as tough a safety as there is playing. But he's wondering right now, how come this guy's getting on me free and clean? Safeties have to have somebody brush him up. That's tackling a full grown tractor right there. Look at that man. Buccaneers along with the Redskins the two least penalized teams in the National Football League. That flag that yellow goes up against the Bucks. And coach Tony Dungy. What a huge play it was Kevin had the first down. So with the penalty now, it moves it back to the 18-yard line, setting up second down and 15 for Trent Dilfer, who has thrown two touchdown passes today. Allstock has thrown in for another. Flips it off. Caught by Dunn. Head on head with Jason Belzer. And he picks up a gain of 14 on the play, setting up third and one. Right now, a McDonald's game break. Back to Hollywood, and here's our Joe Buck. Jamal Anderson has 95 yards today. This is one of them, a touchdown run. Four lead changes in this game. That tied the game at 24, started the second half. The battle for third place in the NFC West. Can you feel the excitement in Indianapolis, Kevin and Jerry? <laughs> you got it, mister. Here's the play right here. This is a big play, third down. They came with four wide receivers. That completion to Dunn, the first catch by a running back today. Third and one, flag is thrown, pass is caught, they stop it in mid-motion. The fall start on the offense, number 70, five-yard penalty remains third down. A nice job there by Trent Dilfer, just picked it up and threw it. They had seven people in the box versus that four wides made him throw the football. 
Four penalties on Tampa Bay, and three of the four have come against the Buccaneer offense. Jets on top of Baltimore. You saw the Redskins shutting out Chicago up at Soldier Field. It's third down and six. Bilfer will burn a timeout. Play clock was down to two. So timeout for Dilfer halfway through the third. His Buccaneers leading 21-13. Well, the Buccaneers have third down and six right now. Today, Dilfer on third down has gone four of four, converting three. And you can see, Jerry, the highest rated NFC quarterback on third down. Well, he's got third in long. He likes that uh, three-yard third down where he's a little bit longer on this one. He's got to get to the 34. Good time for Dilfer, moves up on the run, needs to get to the 34. He's hit and brought down on the play by Steve Morrison. It's a gain of three and well shy of a first down. And so, the Buccaneers have got a punt. Well, what the Colts did, they seldom do. There's three-man rush. So with a three-man rush, they have eight people back in the coverage. This allows the corner to jump underneath because he's got safety held deep. So they went with what's called a man, 22 man underneath with a three man rush. No place for Dill for the throw. Nice job. Nice change up by the Colt defense. Sean Landetta. Stay blind, fair catch. Makes it at the 38. There was an inadvertent bump. There is no penalty flag. A 39 yard punt by Landetta. Gooch was the one to brush against him. And the Colts will get it back, trailing 21-13. Nick Fox, NFL Sunday is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Enjoy today's game with the Edge Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. 16 pieces of pure toppings. Have you been to the Edge? Kevin Harlan, Jerry Glanville, there's the hand of Justin, the quarterback. Paul heard it, a dislocated finger, wrapping it with... Uh, that tape ice is inside to keep the swelling down. So former Buccaneer quarterback Kelly Holcomb is back there on first and ten, going deep, and he hits his tight end Ken Dilger at the Buccaneer 35, a gain of 26. Well, there's a tight end that when he was a rookie, I thought was going to be a future star, and this year he's been invisible. He's going right down through the seam. The free safety or the strong safety at the oh, I can see they had the linebacker on a man to man could not do it with play fake Hardy Nickerson can't take a play fake and the tight end down the middle. How about Holcomb. Excellent and right now if you're a coaching for the Colts you got to say if we score do we go for two. First and ten from the 36 of the Buccaneers great time sets up the screen Dilger second consecutive catch he gained six leaning to the 30 yard line brought down by linebacker Rufus Porter. Rufus Porter did a good job of seeing the tight end come out on a delay that time. Rather than release down through the seam. Watch his release on this one. He fakes the block, sticks the linebacker, and then comes underneath the tackle. By the way, the tackle was illegal. <laughs> the line, the line can't get downfield before the ball is thrown, but it worked. Second down and four outside the 30 of the Buccaneers, who lead it 21 Blitz. 13. Blitz is on. Falk gets by one way, gets by another way, and digs and churns his way to the 27. Reagan Upshaw got him around the legs. That'll set up third and one. Classic strong safety blitz. Watch John Lynch. He's going to come underneath the blocker. He's going to walk up, but when he gets here, he comes underneath leaving his inside arm free not his outside arm this is how you carry out the blitz get underneath the blockers there it is make him cut and juke everybody else has to run him down Steve White getting in on that play former quarterback at Stanford former Major League Baseball prospect with the Marlins he's the, missile. he's the best hitting safety playing in today's football third a long one looks like Falk was stood up and brought back and shy of the first down. They did not give it to him. He had to get to the 26. He was lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. They're not going to go kick it. Now they're bringing the kicking team back to the sideline. What would you do? Fourth down. You're Owen forever. You might as well go try to I uh, try to get the first down. And while you get the first down, you got to have a plan how to get a two point play. In there. Lindy's going to think about it and calls the timeout. 
First regular season game ever for Kelly Holcomb. He's facing fourth and one. He's trailing 21-13. His team is winless, 0 for 8. Lindy and Fonnie is going three quarterbacks deep. Like everything against you. Fourth and one. Falk around the block of Crockett dives and should have the first down inside the 26. Derek Brooks came up from the middle, and if the spot of the referee is any indication, it looks like they've got the necessary yards for the first down. And offensively, they ran the ball like it was on the goal line. He went airborne, just tried to jump in there and get the first down. You can see Tony. You know, Tony is, is used to these close calls. Last week, Charles Evans of the Minnesota Vikings on a very questionable dive up the middle, which proved to be the go-ahead touchdown and the winning touchdown in the game against Minnesota last week, didn't appear to have been in. Some people said yes, some people said no. So he's used to these clo these close calls. There's your friend that lost his fingers only when they measure the ball. Watch his fingers pop. Oh, first down. Pop your fingers out. Yeah, oh. there they are. <laughs> And that's a goal line run, just jump to get the first down. Crockett, lead blocker, Marshall Airborne. Here's the four wides. Including Falk out of range in the bottom of your screen. Blitz is on, handoff, Crockett, big hole for 250 pounds, Zach Crockett to the 17. A gain of nine, Hardy Nickerson brings him down. Well, Tampa Bay tried to blitz that formation, but they did not fill up the inside gaps when they blitzed. And Crockett have a sensational day. Prior to that run, he was averaging six yards a carry, Kevin. Ten for 60 before that one. Six foot two from Pompano Beach, Ford. Second down, a short two. Quick handoff. Crockett again. Working his way up the middle and down to the 15-yard line. That should be a first down. It is for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, Tampa Bay brought everybody up on the line of scrimmage to try to stop that. They got nine people on the line of scrimmage right now. Last week, it was a defensive struggle with the Minnesota Vikings. Today, they're in a shootout with the Colts. And I think mainly because of the Colts' Zach Crockett. He's the one that's making the Colts fight this thing. It is first down and 10. And the money it's a pass caught by Sean Dawkins to the six-yard line. He picks up nine. It'll be second down and one. And Kelly Holcomb, who before today never played in a regular season game, has been on the money, taking the place of starter Paul Justin. Easy throw, the slot back just on a quick out and roll. One, two, throw. Watch how quick it comes out. Remember, motion past the wide out. The wide out's going to be the receiver. It's second down and about a yard. Falk around the Crockett block. Outside, breaking one tackle. First down, Falk to the run. First and goal to go, the Colts trailing 21-13, late third quarter. Sure, earlier in this drive, you were talking about a possible two-point conversion should in Fonny's offense get in the end zone. I think that's what you, you, you got to think that when you got inside the 30-yard line. If we score, you better have your two-point play ready to go. This is first down. Three tight ends, 10th play of the drive, first and goal, Falk with Crockett leading him. Down at the one. At the line of scrimmage and no gain, and Derek Brooks, the leading tackler, one of the NFL's top linebackers, the first half of the season, makes the stick. And Brooks has had some injury, was not able to practice because of a, a pull in his quad, but when he's healthy and he's playing, him and Hardy Nickerson, I don't know where you find two better players. And they blow up, they blow that run up, which looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Back almost to the two.
Marshall Falk was not woozy and is being helped off the field and Lamont Warren out of Colorado has come in in his place. Drive for the Colts began back at their 38. 11 points. Second down and goal. Behind the lead block at Crockett, Lamont Warren scores his first touchdown of the season. And listen to this crowd, Kevin. Finally, something to cheer about for an 0 8 crowd. Going for two. And you like that call? Got to go for two here. The reason you'd go for two, the field goal will still win it for you if you get a chance. If you miss the, if you miss the two point, the field goal still puts you ahead. Warren stays in the game. Two tight ends, two wideouts. Two point conversion from. And he's audible. He's audible in the play. Holcomb will go to the air. For the two point conversion, it's knocked away. A wow. flag is thrown on the play and thrown on the quarterback who is covering Anthony Parker and a pass intended for Sean Dawkins. Well, let me tell you, this puts the ball half the distance, Kevin. When you go half the distance on it, now this becomes a running play for two points. It is against Tampa Bay. So now they put the ball, Jerry, much closer on the two-point try. It's now a running play out of goal line Pass offense. That's what happens. On the defense, number 27. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. First down. Falk is still out. Warren is in. Crockett, the lead blocker. The fake by Holcomb into the end zone for two, and he got it. Tight end Marcus Pollard. Gutsy call. Gutsy, gutsy call. And you got to love Kelly. He went over the Tampa bench and shook his fist at it. We are tied at 21. With Marshall Falk out, Lamont Warren came in and fouled the Crockett lead block on the touchdown. Well, I got to say, I thought they would run the football. That's the touchdown run. On the two point after the penalty, I thought they would run the football, especially with a young quarterback. Took guts to do this, and you can't be any more wide open. Shades of Lambeau Field in Green Bay. What a happy youngster. Never thought he'd even be playing today. The Buccaneers are set to get the ball back. They've had the ball only three plays this entire third quarter. And this game summary is brought to you by Bud Light here at the Dome in Indianapolis. Big day special team wise for the Buccaneers Dill for a couple of touchdown passes the starter Justin is out the backup Holcomb waved signed by Tampa Bay four times is in there Redell Anthony from the five yard line to the open side of the field and there he goes there goes a flag and Anthony is out near midfield. Monty Montgomery brought him down 45 yard gain as it stands right now but that flag went right into the blocking at the 15 yard line and it's against the Buccaneers and wipes out a huge return. Yep you add up the yardage where the ball would be the during ball the return holding on the receiving team number 87 half the distance to the goal first down. Well, the ball went from the 47-yard line 
all the way back to the seven yard line. So that's a really a 40 yard penalty. Jerry Ellis in the guilty party. He was a member they of call the 87 right here, Kev. All right. Oh, I don't see it either. I saw him shoving him down. First and ten handoff. Mike Allstock into a pile and a gain of one. The Colts have driven this crowd into full frenzy. <laughs> it's hard to believe they don't have a win. They may let the clock wind down, and indeed they are. The Colts coming in winless at 0-8. The Buccaneers, beginning 5-0, have lost three in a row. And on Halloween weekend, ghosts are coming back to haunt the Buccaneers. And these Bucks spook easily. Buccaneers 21, Colts 21. Back to the Dome after this from your local Fox station. We begin the fourth quarter with the Buccaneers facing second down in the long eight on their own seven. Dilfer forced to the end zone, being chased by Fontenot, and throws a pass which is caught for a first down at the 20-yard line on the far side by tight end Dave Moore. Now, oh, he's overruled. They changed the call. Incomplete pass. Elijah Alexander was the linebacker who was trailing the tight end more to the far side. Well, he ends up with no backs in the backfield. Everybody's out of there. He's back there by himself in the end zone, kind of dangerous. Gets chased and flushed. Makes a good throw. Ah, right foot. Good call. Good call. Right foot out. Good call. Was not pushed while in the air. No. And the right foot is out. Right there. Dave Moore didn't get both feet in. Attack from the defender. Third down. Well, the defender had nothing to do where he no. would have come down. If he was airborne and in play and then knocked while airborne out of bounds by the defensive back, it would have been ruled a catch. Well, if the official feels he would come down inbounds without getting pushed, and the official says that's an inbound catch. Let's see if they go back to no help on the pass protection. He's got one back back there now, Kevin. It's third down and nine. A lot of noise inside the dome. Let's. Dilfer throws, drops incomplete. Even had Redell Anthony lassoed that pass, he would have been shy of the first down. So the Colt defense picks up where their offense left off. Well, Dilfer felt the blitz coming. Rydell Anthony on the outcut. Excellent coverage by Gray. Gray's driving the route. No chance. Here's Second. where you got to have a big time punt Wait right now. If you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, get off the couch, stand up. You got to have a major league punt. And then in the shadow of his own crossbar. Second consecutive three and out for the Buccaneers. Stay blind, will return from the 43 for Indianapolis. Nice coverage by the Buccaneers on a 49 yard punt by Sean Landetta. The flag is down back at the seven. Illegal man downfield. And they're going to make him do it again. 49-yard punt wiped away. An eligible member of the kicking team downfield before the kick, number 50. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Second consecutive special team penalty against the Buccaneers, which it cost him. Cost him dearly. I'm still surprised that the Colts didn't take the ball. You're 20 yards away from going ahead. All you have to do is gain 20 yards, and you get in field goal range. Joe Marciano, the special teams coach. Excellent special teams coach. The Buccaneers with a season high seven penalties today. In a game they felt they had to win. On 
another try for Landetta. This not nearly as far. And then the line drive is picked up by Stablon. He's by midfield, so he gets a better return, and he's down into Tampa Bay territory. A 12-yard return. Leggett makes the stop. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. By Dockers Khakis. Hey, hey, nice pants. And by Lotus. Work the web with Lotus Domino. Everybody wants to be like Marshall <laughs> Falk. That was a Pee Wee game played oh, here before I, I came today. Yeah. Little dance afterward, yeah, not bad. They know how to do it. There's the real Marshall Falk, injured and out. Lamont Warren is taking his place with just seconds into the fourth quarter. And not much dancing for him the entire season. Nope. 11 unanswered points by the Tampa Bay, rather by the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the four wideouts again where they try to run it up inside. Best start today for the Colts at the 49 of the Buccaneers. Holcomb right to work on first down, dumps it off to Crockett. Zeroing in on a first down, picks up nine to the 41. Crockett circling out right in the middle where they had nobody on defense. And Kelly almost slipped and fell down. Vikings on top. Packers will play tonight against Detroit. Carolina all over open. Second down and two. Lamont Warren. John Lynch got him, but a first down nonetheless by Lamont Warren. And they'll move the chains. A first down for the Colts. Well, John Lynch is the safety that comes up inside. Plays like a linebacker. They ran a cutback. He made the block. Pardon me. He made the block for the cutback so they could cut the backside off. Watch that. But here comes the safety. That's building an eight-man front so you don't go too far without full-speed contact. Lynch became a full-time starter last year. I got mad in the college draft. I was going to draft him. Of all people that got him ahead of me, Sam Weiss. Your buddy. First and ten, reverse, and it goes to Aaron Bailey on the handoff by Warren. And Bailey on the move, and an open field and down to the 21-yard line. Rufus Porter makes the stop, and an 18-yard gain on a reverse to Aaron Bailey. Well, when you run reverse, the quarterback usually has to get involved in the blocking. Let's see where Kelly is. There he got. He got a man down, chopped him on the leg. Great call. They pursue so fast. Tampa Bay defense is so fast and so quick. It's a good call because they always they always chase. Here's a blitz. Here's a blitz, Kevin. 100 more yards on the ground today than last week. Zach Crockett slow to get out of the blocks and thrown for a loss of a yard. Rufus Porter brought him down. Let me show you the blitzer coming off the right tackle. There's nobody left to block him. Okay, this is going to be the blitzer. Even though the play's going this way, they're out of people to block. Chase Rufus, chase, chase. Boom, in the back. Hello. Both teams on different courses coming in. Colts had lost their first eight games, nine in a row dating back to last year in the regular season. The pressure that has to be around this young Tampa Bay team, beginning 5-0, and losing their last three. Second and 11, pass is caught. Marvin Harrison, he's down to the 13, about two yards shy of a first. He picks up nine. There's a late flag thrown where Harrison was brought down. A quick slant by Harrison. And they're helping the young quarterback with that three-step drop. One, two, third step hits the ground, ball comes out. I think they're trying to decide if it was a pick. They had a tight end going to the flat with Harrison coming down a slant, and they're trying to figure out whether they rubbed him off or picked him. There is no foul in play. All the action was legal. Third down. One man thought he saw a pick, and another man said he never bumped him. When you run a quick slant, you look to, to see if there's a pick from the inside. All right, one guy's going to come in, and the other guy's going to come out, and they want to see if there's a pick on the secondary. Watch those two. And there is no pick. Good call by the official. 
One overrule the other. Nobody bumped anybody. Good legal play. Twenty-four-year-old Kelly Holcomb. Didn't he didn't play in that world league. He did play overseas with Barcelona. Fifteen of twenty today. First NFL regular season action ever. Well, it's funny. The guy replaced Paul Justin. He played for the team in Germany. So we had two world league quarterbacks playing for the Colts in the same day. There's the old big hand. He's got that back to nice. There's the man right there. He's got his cast in his pocket. Third down and two. They've missed their last four third down trials. Holcomb, great time. Low and incomplete. Into the turf, looking for tight end Marcus Pollard. It's fourth down. They'll try for three, so the Buccaneers keep the Colts out of the end zone. And that was Kelly's first bad pass. That was an ugly pass. That was a dirt ball. He knew it, but he's been so good. That's the first time he threw a bad one, and he says he hit me on the elbow, but nobody did touch him. But he's still having a good game. <laughs> Kerry Blanchard is having a good game. Two field goals already today from 43 and 36 yards away. Gardaki will hold. This will be a 30-yard attempt. For the lead. He missed it wide. Left. And he had hit 16 consecutive field goals inside 40 yards. We are still tied. And the Buccaneers get it back. Well, a seven play drive went for naught as the Colts and their normally reliable kicker, Kerry Blanchard. Wide left. That was a chance at the lead. And the Buccaneers breathing a sigh of relief from the 20 yard line, first and 10. Dilfer right to work on first down. Being chased by McCoy and Fontenot and throws it away. That'll be second down and 10 for Dilfer. A McDonald's game break. We go back to Hollywood, and here is Joseph Francis Buck. <laughs> oh, you're going to throw me off like that? In the third quarter, Chris Chandler with his strike to Terrence Mathis, an 11-yard touchdown throw. Back and forth, back and forth. Francis says a seven-point lead for Atlanta. Don't forget getting ready in San Francisco. Latest installment of the rivalry of the decade coming up. I don't know your middle name, Kevin, so you're on your own, buddy. Roberts. It's it's TV boy. Kevin Roberts. TV boy. <laughs> Harlan. Second down and 10. We're tied at 21. Under 11 to play. All start on the pitch. Wow. Wrapped by Elijah Alexander and Jason Belzer. And there's a loose ball. And they call it a fumble. Nobody blew the whistle. And they're signaling a touchdown. But wait. No flag. No whistle. Touchdown Colts. Robert Blackman. Everybody stood around like a whistle had blown. Well, he knew it was a live ball. He scooped it up. He told us in the meeting yesterday, I've never been down so much, but I got to keep playing. He said, say hello to my dad. He'll be watching in Texas. Watch him scoop it up. Good force right here. They smack that ball out. One safety, Belger knocks it out, and Blackman scoops it. We talked to both safeties because these two safeties are as good a hitters as there are in the league, and they just made the big play. One knocked it out, and the other scored. Colts have the lead. Blanchard's extra point is in. An incredible turn of events. And a flag, flag, flag. has been thrown. A flag is down. I saw a Colt turn around and run to the official immediately, and the flag came out. Blackman, the longtime Seahawk, where he was a starter his entire career, comes up with his biggest play as a Colt. On a play where a lot of people just stood around and watched. He, he said, this losing streak is so painful, I can't even tell you how painful it is. But he says, we're going to keep on fighting. And I asked him about his partner, the other safety. Jason Belser and he said what a hitter well the hitter knocked the ball out and the opportunist Robert Blackman picked it up and scored after the try there was a personal foul on the defense number 91 unnecessary roughness that foul will be enforced on the kickoff we're down to 10 46 to play in this game 
The Indianapolis Colts have scored 18 unanswered points on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and it's 28 to 21. The Colts, losers of eight games in a row this year. There is a penalty on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So instead of kicking off at the 30, the Colts will kick off at the 45. And the Buccaneers notch another penalty, a season-high eight in this game. Kicking off from this spot, you had to put it on the ground, Kevin. Give yourself a chance to make a play. Don't kick it through the end zone and come to the 20. I'd put it on the ground and try to make a play somewhere around the 8-9 yard line. Good point. Here come the Colts, who have scored 18 unanswered points. Wine drives it in the end zone. Redell Anthony watches it go away. Well, I'm going to show you two safeties. Well, take a look at this one. Okay, Jason Bells is going to be the safety. His daddy played for the Kansas City Chiefs. This guy all the way over here drops back, and this is what effort does. If you keep running, here comes the safety, Jason Belzer. He knocks it out. Look at this safety. He's got a mile to come. Now the ball's out. Now the ball's on the ground. And the safety, Robert Blackman, keeps on working, scoops it up, runs it in. Guy lives in Sugar Land, Texas. A yeah, little taste of sugar right there. Well, how do the Buccaneers respond? 10:41 in the fourth quarter, now trailing 28 to 21. The pitch out to Dunn. The end around goes to Redell Anthony, and there he goes, Anthony, with the first down into the secondary before he's brought down by Belzer and Robert Blackman. Dean is 17. Dean is 17 on the play. That is Tampa Bay's first first down since the final minute of the first half. I'd call that a drought. <laughs> Moore and Hate will be the double tight end alignment. All stopped by himself in the backfield. The Buccaneers get some breathing space. Dilfer short drop, quick throw. It's caught close to a first down. Horace Copeland. They say he is the fastest player on the team. His first reception today from quarterback Trent Dilfer. Just a quick slant, doing exactly what the Colts were doing on a three-step, one-two, pop it. Hard to stop unless you got a safety standing in between the tight end and the flank. They get the first down beyond their 47. Cover two, so he's all the bowling against cover two coverage. Goes to a run. All start on first and ten. Hands off. Wrapped up first by Steve Martin, who is a second-year player from Missouri. And then Morrison, the linebacker, jumped on his back. And there's a look at Steve Martin, who was a part-time starter last year as a rookie. But Trent Dilfer was doing exactly what he was coached. When the both safeties get deep, you should be able to run the ball. So when he saw that, he audible. But the Colts are up to stopping you with seven. When you can stop the running game with seven, you're in control. Second down 11 for Dilfer. Good time. Throws well high. And it whistles over the head of receiver Horace Cope. We talked to Dilfer yesterday, and it is usually, Jerry, about this time of the game where they say, open it up. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I said, every time I watch you, when there's eight minutes or four minutes, they say, okay, we're not going to be conservative anymore, Trent. Go win the game. Well, let, let me tell you, they got to go win the game now. They're behind, and it's time to open it up. It's third and 11. There won't be any more open than this, Kevin. Four wide receivers. Reno, third down and 11. They've got to get all the way to the 42-yard line. Dilfer blitz his arm. Great time. The throw short of the first down and drop. And there's a late flag that's thrown at the 41. The flag is down. Dilfer gets up. The pass incomplete to Copeland. And let's see what the flag is all about from referee Mike Carey. It was all the way downfield. All the way to the 40-yard line. Against the Colts. Automatic first down, Kevin. Illegal contact by the defense, number 34. 
five yards. Automatic. First down. Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator for Indianapolis. Way after the play, what, what drives you crazy as a as a defensive coordinator wasn't near the play, the ball wasn't around there, there's no sense in pushing anybody. They've got the tandem of Dunn and Allstott in the backfield. First down and 10 from the Colt 48. Dilfer. Rushes on, the pass is deep, and dropped, incomplete, no flag as it was going for the rookie, Redell Anthony. Second down and 10, 8.20, 6 to play in the game. Great adjustment by Rydell Anthony. He, he has to turn, it's not well thrown, it's underthrown. He has to come back for the ball. But Carlton Gray is up to the task. Now he sees it's not going deep, so he slows down, comes back, and Gray comes back. Two good football players. Gray comes from Seattle where he played four years. A little bit different for Duffer in the second half. Second down and ten. Draw play, done, breaks a couple tackles, and weaves his way for five to the 43, setting up third down and about five. Elijah Alexander, former 10th round pick by the Buccaneers, makes the stop for the Colts. Well, Dunn hasn't played much. When he comes in there, he looks awful quick. Maybe they were trying to wear down this team with the big all stop and now go into the quickness with Dunn. Nice contact by Elijah Alexander. Outside linebacker moved to the middle linebacker because of injuries. It's third down and five. Delphi. Knocked away, spectacular defensive play by Diedrich Mathis, and flag. a flag is down at the 47. What a defensive play, you called it. The Buccaneers, who have been penalized all day, watch the Colts get a second consecutive penalty on the Jim Johnson coach defense. And let's see what that brings. Illegal hands for the face on the defense number 95. Five yards. Automatic. That's the first down. Bernard Whittington taking the place of the injured Ellis Johnson. And he drove his hand. He stayed. They, he drove his hand to the face of the blocker. Yeah, he just grabbed him by the face mask. Pretty picky unis call on that one. Buccaneers began this drive at their own 20. First and 10. Play action by Dilferhead as he throws. Wide open. Caught by Horace Copeland. First down to the Colt 23-yard line. And that's a gain of 15. Well, that's the first Tampa Bay Buccaneer I've seen wide open in a long time. Must be zoned because he sits down. And the Colts have, have just about pitched a shutout. No one's open. That's what it was. It was a zone, and nobody broke to the curl. Copeland's got a couple passes on this drive. Missed the entire 96 season, Jerry, with the knee. Slow to come back. Now he is back in full flower for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Audible. Changing the play. Great play of the drive. First and 10. Quick throw. He read it well. There's the completion. It's caught. Carl Williams breaking a tackle. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Well, Trent Dilfer in high school had a 3.9 plus average in college 3.7. Well, he just showed your intelligence. He saw what we saw up here, saw the strong safety move over, saw the free come to the tight end, changed the play, throws the touchdown. He read their mail. This is an intelligent play by the quarterback. He read the mail and he sent it back. What a job he did. He saw the free safety walk over to cover the tight end before the ball was snapped and changed everything. That's intelligence. 3.9 great point average in high school. Problems with extra points for Houston. High snap to Walsh, and the kick is up, and we are tied in Indianapolis. 6.52 to play in the fourth quarter. 
A reverse to Anthony of 17, a pass to Copeland of 15, and then Carl Williams from 24 yards away. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Enjoy today's game with the Edge Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. 16 pieces of pure toppings. Have you been to the Edge? Two ties, two lead changes, the Buccaneers and the Colts at 28 apiece. And here's Michael Houston, who's had two touchbacks today. And Aaron Bailey will take it out from three yards deep in the end zone. Tripped up and brought down nicely on the play by Tyrone Leggett. Let's take a look at the 24-yard touchdown pass to Carl Williams. Watch the two safeties for the Colts. The quarterback for Tampa Bay, Trent Dilfer, reads it. They walk over. The quarterback's looking at this free safety and this strong safety. Watch when he walks over. He walks over so he can cover him. He stands up and changes the play. Here's a guy with a 3-9 in high school, a 3-7 in college, and a four-point today. Read their mail. <laughs> That's intelligence, and that helps you win if you're a football coach. Colts will need intelligence and some minor miracle play from Kelly Holcomb. First and ten pass. Low almost kicked off. Incomplete. Donnie Abraham was covering Marvin Harrison. It's second down and ten. Both teams, by the way, with two timeouts remaining. Well, the only thing that saved this from being an interception, it was a bad throw. So if Kelly had a chance to throw a bad one, this was a good time to do it because he's read it. He's got the play. He's going to intercept it. But it's so low, it's on the ground. A good throw, and Donnie Abraham had an interception. Rocket in the backfield, second down and 10 yards to go. Short drop, the quick throw. Duncan takes the pitch, knocked out of bounds after a gain of nine. It'll be third and one. Well, Anthony Parker is not reading the quarterback like Donnie Abraham is. He is not reading the three-step drop. He's late. If you go back to the play before that, 21, Donnie almost intercepted it. He's watching the quarterback. When he takes three steps, he's stopping. They got to get Anthony Parker playing the corner like Donnie Abraham is to stop the three-step throwing attack. Not a very good third down team, the Colts. Third and one. They've missed their last five. Third down tries. Lamont Warren, the second effort, got him to the first down at the 30-yard line. Melvin Johnson brings him down. That was a big first down. Well, how about Lamont? I think all the little backs get to watch this game. This is a physical, tough, straight-ahead running, no fair dodging. You listen to it. Coming at you. Marshall Falk is out. Here's actual speed. First down and 10 on the Warren. First down run. Holcomb steps up in the pocket and throws to Warren at the 36-yard line. Melvin Johnson brings him down. Warren's 10th catch of the year. That's good for a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Well, last week, Tony Mandridge absolutely stunk against San Diego. Got beat on the inside move. So Chidi Ahanatu says, I'm going to try to beat him up underneath because he got beat so bad last week. Watch this. There's the roll underneath. And you got to love Mandridge. He worked on it. He plowed him right down in the ground. Get beat on me one time, but not the next week. Offensive line has only given up one sack today for the Colts. The blitz on second and four. There goes a flag, and there goes Lamont Warren. The yardage right there, good for five yards out to the 41-yard line, but two flags on the field. Hardy Nickerson makes the stop. Well, the linebacker was going to blitz off the open side. He left too early. He was going to come underneath and try to blow the play up. Rufus Porter. And a good job by Lamont Warren. He read that he was coming underneath, and he bounced the play outside. I think they lost the jersey number. Offsides on the defense, number 91. Five yards, and measurement goes first down. Really, I think the guy that jumped was, uh, this is 91. Watch the linebacker move up here, and he'll blitz off that side. That's Rufus. And when Rufus Porter blitzes, yeah, it was Rufus. They missed it. We got it. He came underneath. Lamont saw it, and he jumped outside. We got to help these officials all we can. 
You've never been one not <laughs> to be very charitable toward referees. Well, no, I've always tried to help him. First down and 10 from the 41, clock at 450. Hot and high, the pass intended for running back Lamont Warren. Clock is stopped at 447. Second down and 10 for young Kelly Holcomb. He, he's saying my fault. He could not follow through because it got pushed in his face. Watch his throwing motion. He stops it. That's why he's petting on his chest. He sees all these people up in his chest, and he didn't follow through. Ugly ball, and he knows it. His fault. Holcomb's numbers today, 17 to 25. Second down and 10. We're tied at 28. Play action by Holcomb going deep. He's got Harrison. There goes a flag. That'll be a completion. Or as good as a completion. Donnie Abraham was there. It'll be in the vicinity of the 23-yard line. And the Colts will have it first and 10. The Tampa Bay was in the blitz. Pass interference the blitz. on the defense, number 21. Automatic. You're by First yourself time. all the way. Yeah. And it was a bad throw. He didn't know they should have. If he could have looked over his left shoulder, he probably could have picked it off. But he thought he was going to give up a touchdown and didn't bother looking back. So a play as good as a completion down to the 24-yard line where it's first down and 10 yards to go. In essence, a 35-yard gain and a 35-yard penalty. Pocket in the backfield. Four wide receivers. Holcomb with the draw play, handoff, Crockett got a great block from Mandarich, takes it inside, gets a first down to the Tampa Bay 12-yard line. It's a gain of 12. Well, Crockett's having a heck of a day, but he can thank the offensive coaching staff. This four-wide outset is where he's getting all of his yardage because they're in that 4-1, and that 4-1 cannot stop Nice block by Mandridge. Mandridge having a heck of a comeback after last week. Crockett, 81 yards. That ties a career high rushing. First down and 10. They've got Warren in motion out of the backfield. On the deflection, it was caught. It was off the fingertips of Dawkins, hauled in by Warren. And they're all the way down to the seven-yard line. Clock stopped at 3.52. What a play. Well, remember when the back motions past the wideout, the ball's going to the wideout. Lindy and Fanny, this back is going to motion. He's going to pass a wideout. 87, Sean Dawkins. That means the ball's going to Sean Dawkins. That's how you got to play Lindy. There's the ball. There's the tip. Ended up on Lamont. They can get a first down. It's second down and five from the seven. Under four to play. Tied at 28. And a Warren around the clock at block. He's inside the five. And about a yard and a half shy of the first down. John Lynch makes the stop in the secondary. Well, I think Lindy is totally committed to the big back the rest of the day. The small backs, Warwick Dunn, Marshall Falk. Little guys are watching. This is a big guy's game today. Big time hitting. Two timeouts apiece. Tied at 28. Colts came in having lost their first eight games this year. Nine in a row dating back to December of last season. The Buccaneers have lost three in a row. It's third and three from inside the five. The fake and a fumble on the play and it's loose at the 11-yard line. The Buccaneers say they've got it. And Tampa Bay recovers the fumble. Chidi Ahanatu jumped on it. Watch the penetration, Kevin. Watch the people in the backfield instantly. Look at that penetration. Steve. Reagan that, Upshaw. Reagan Upshaw was. Reagan Upshaw broke up the handoff. Got all. Look, he's there. It's going to be a bootleg. What is going to be a handoff? What a nice play by Reagan Upshaw. 
Devin Allstott in the backfield. First down and 10 yards to go. Zilfer White to work on first down. Throws a screen pass. Caught by Dunn. Has the first down as he takes a guy on his back out to the 23. Picks up 11 yards. <laughs> I'll tell you, we have some excitement here. You never heard a crowd like this rooting for a team that hasn't won a game. I love that. I love that. It's, it's not over. From the 24 yard line, first down and 10. Good time for Dilfer. Outside dropped by his tight end, Dave Moore, who's caught a pass today. In the end zone for a touchdown, incomplete. Second down and 10. Yeah, you can't drop that ball. That ball's right where Steve Moore has to have it. Good throw. You got to make the play. It's crunch time. It's two minutes. Good throw by the quarterback. Come on, Dave. Second down and 10. Down in motion out of the backfield. Blitz is on. Dilfer throws. This time the tight end Moore holds on and picks up a small gain on the play of four. Setting up third down and six as Steve Morrison out of Michigan makes the stop. <laughs> Dave Moore drops an easy one. The play before comes back, and this is a tough catch on tough coverage, close coverage, all over him, running the diagonal. There's the linebacker going for the ball. Steve Morrison, and that's a good catch. We're down to the two minute warning. Tied at 28, Indianapolis and Tampa Bay. Tied at 28, two minute warning in the dome in Indianapolis. Coming up next, our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader continues. The Cowboys and the 49ers. Except those of you watching in Chicago. Third and long. They've got to get to the 34. Dilfer with the defender in his face. Throws downfield. And it is dropped. No flag. No whistle. No penalty. To Carl Williams. Incomplete. 40-yard line. The Buccaneers have got a punt. And a great job by Dilfer to get it off. Oh, good. Good defense. He was beat. He turned around, watched the pressure on Dilfer. Ray McElroy was the guy covering Jerry, and in his face, this young kid out of Missouri, Steve Martin. All over Dilfer. Good defense by the Colts. Sean Lendett in a punt. Gets off a rocket. Steve line back to his own 18. And from behind, brought down. Beautiful tackle on the play by special teamer Sheldon Corbett. He is a rookie. Pretty good coverage, and these are not known as great coverage teams. What a great punt. That's why you don't go out and sign a rookie punter when you lose your starter. You go get a veteran. Rolls on him after a 53 yard punt by Sean Landett. What must be going through that kid's mind? Just don't make a mistake. I know he felt bad on that fumble, but his offensive line all came over and talked to him on the sideline while their defense was out there. Even the rookie offensive lineman came over and said, We can move it, we can do it. On the 23, first and 10 with Sapp in his face, Holcomb throws it away. And I think anyone would do the same thing. With Warren Sapp running like a runaway freight train right to your face, it'll be second down and ten. Well, they let him all in because it's a middle of screen. If he can dunk this over the rush, they they, they got to stun him. But it's a middle of screen. Everybody to block Hardy Nickerson, and he couldn't find Lamont. Both teams with two timeouts, 141 left in regulation. We're tied at 28, second down and 10. Holcomb throws, pass is caught. Brian Stabline, his second catch today. Gain of two on the play. It'll be third down. His passes in the fourth quarter, talking about Kelly's, have gone low. He's gone to throwing the ball like a dirt ball. 
He needs to get back in his good rhythm. Of course, he's in the shotgun. He's not in that three-step, which he did so well. He's in the shotgun again. Warren at his side. Four receivers, platoon. Third down, eight to go. And the pass is bobbled and incomplete. He would have had the yards for a first down, but Sean Dawkins could not bring it in. And it was close to being intercepted. And he was close to being sacked. That tells you everybody's playing as hard as they can play. Well, when you've lost a combined eight games between these two teams in a row, you're going to play that way. Sean Dawkins on the out route. Couldn't get control. Good throw. Dardocky to punt. How many times has he punted, Kevin? I, it, this may be a record. Morrow Williams deep back. And Dardocky has been punting a lot today. Bad punt. Wobbly punt. Carl Williams, who's returned one for 63 yards already today, gets a block, and he's inside Colt territory, taking it down near the 45. No penalty flags, a 40-yard repunt, but a 21-yard return by Carl Williams. Are they hitting or what? If you're sitting at home, I promise you, everything you see on television is not the only hitting. I'm watching people wobble off. I'm helping uh, players are helping each other off the field, both sides. Spilling their guts. Here's the NFC Central. The Packers will play the Lions tonight up at Lambeau. The Vikings are winning. Tampa Bay is tied. Chicago losing today to the Redskins up at Soldier Field. The Buccaneers have lost three in a row. And a win today, they said, was imperative against the 0-8 Indianapolis Colts. They've been taken to the limit. On first down, Dilfer. Great time underneath. And it's caught by Dunn. Gets a first down, taking it to the 33. Picks up 12. Elijah Alexander makes the stop. Well, what the Colts did there, they went to a three-man rush. They've been putting a lot of pressure with four, but they switched to three with 44 seconds left. Timeout taken. Dilfer's got it first down and 10 yards to go. 44 seconds in regulation. We're tied from the Colt 33. Four receivers again. Dilfer throws pass caught. Redell Anthony got away and spins to the 23. Picks up nine. Setting up second down and one. All out blitz on Dilfer that time. Good job of bringing the ball out instantly. Good throw. We said they like to give him about a minute or two to try to win the game. This week under a minute. Second down and one. Dilfer. What a catch made for a first down at the 18-yard line by tight end Dave Moore. I'm shocked they threw it. I wouldn't throw it again. There'd be no more passing. Six-yard pickup. Timeout taken by the Buccaneers. This will set it up for Michael Houston. We're tied at 28. One, two. We're back in Indianapolis, and here's Michael Houston. Last week, his missed point after may have cost the Buccaneers, but he can do a lot to rectify that with Coach Tony Dungy. Ball will go down at the 26. This will be a 36-yard attempt. The holder is Steve Walsh. It is a brand-new holder, and many people think that with Barnhart out and Walsh now the new holder, that has been the source of Houston's problems. For the lead, a high snap put down. It is up, and it is good, and the Buccaneers lead it 31-28 with eight seconds to play. Walsh got a high snap down. And I think they did the right thing, having Walsh become the holder with Landetta being out of football, trying to get Landetta ready to come in and hold. Two weeks ago, the Colts suffered a horrible loss to the Buffalo Bills. Steve Christie kicked a field goal to give Buffalo the win. And the high snap put down by Walsh. And this may indeed give the Buccaneers a win against the Colts. Right down the middle. Indianapolis with one timeout remaining. What can they do in eight seconds? 
Well, you got to try to keep it alive. This kick cannot be tackled. You have to have a play, sort of like a rugby play. You have to lateral the kick return. Keep moving the ball around and end up in the, in the hands of your fastest guy. If it goes to a lineman, you got to pitch it back. If you're kicking off for Tampa, you're going to have two safeties instead of one. Let them bring it back as far as you want, as long as they don't score. You don't care if they bring it back 80 yards. So some of your cover people will be safeties. Ordinarily, the kicker is a safety. You have two people be the safety, and you put the ball on the ground. Well, for Houston to get the kick away and in, it was set up by a 21-yard punt return by Carl Williams. Bailey from the 10 yard line up the middle he goes five seconds on the clock and they stop it there. Now you go to a full blown prevent put a safety back here way back here. come down to one play. Lynch should line up all the way back here at the 45. There's three of them. They're moving. Look at the three people. Lynch, Abraham, deep back. Holcomb running up, winding up, wobbly pass. And it is intercepted by Donnie Abraham. And the Buccaneers have beaten the Colts 31 to 28. And for Tony Dungy and the Buccaneers, their first win in a month. They went 0 for October, but they come up with a win today. The Buccaneers go to 6 and 3. The Colts go to 0 and 9. This play of the game brought to you by Energizer. Michael Husted field goal, a game winning kick. And the Buccaneers win it. And it was all set up on a 21 yard punt return by Carl Williams. Quickly, let's go down to the sideline and Ray Delessio. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, Michael, I would imagine you feel a heck of a lot better this week. Last week, you probably felt a little bit responsible for what happened, but uh, it's all a lot better right now, and the three game losing streak is over. Yeah, that's just the way uh, this game is. You know, it was a weird game all the way around. And uh, yeah, it definitely feels a little bit better than what it felt like last week. You talk about a weird game last week. It was just back and forth. A good old defensive shootout this week. A good old fashioned Western shootout. Yeah, so the Colts have a very good team and things just haven't been bouncing their way this year. And uh, we're very fortunate to come out of here with a victory. Okay. Once again, Tampa Bay wins. Let's go ahead and throw it back up to you, Kevin. So now for Jerry Glanville, this is Kevin Harlan saying so long from Indianapolis with a final score. The Buccaneers 31, the Colts 28. Next, our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader continues. It's the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers, live from 3Com. You've been watching Fox Sports. <laughs>